the Yawkey Foundation, Dunkin' Donuts, loosen up a little, and Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. from Fenway Park in Boston. Essen presents exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball. Tonight, the Red Sox take on the Oakland Athletics. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, and welcome to Red Sox baseball. Game two of the three-game series with the A's. The Red Sox have taken the first four this season against the A's. Ricky Henderson is in the leadoff spot tonight for the Red Sox again. One of the guys expected to step up in the absence of Manny Ramirez. Of course, Ricky went in the lineup for Boston this year, 11-2. and two, And the great milestones Ricky has had first in runs overall, walks and steals. And Ricky has 80 leadoff home runs, also first all-time in that category. We welcome in Jerry Remy as always. And Jerry, he's 43 years of age, but he's still getting it done. And probably will play until he's about 53, the way <laughs> things are going right now. And it's going to be fun. Obviously, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. But it's always fun to watch him and still capable of disrupting a game from the top of the lineup. Last night was a good example. Ricky works pitches better than anybody around. Ran a count to 3-2. to two, Finally got the base hit to drive in a run. Oakland throws the ball away. The Red Sox get two runs out of it. You know, when, uh, when the Red Sox signed Ricky uh, this past offseason, going into spring training, a lot of people say, well, what's the point? 43 years old. Well, the point is he's still very dangerous at the top of the lineup, and the Red Sox need him right now, especially with Manny Ramirez out of the lineup. Derek Lowe returns to Fenway Park, the site of his no-hitter, and tonight he'll go up against Eric Hillius. Hillius, the losing pitcher against Boston and Oakland after two and a third, he gave up six hits and eight runs. We're back with the starting lineups of the first pitch from Fenway after these messages. Uh, Exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. By Miller Lite, life is best told at a place called Miller Time. And by your friends at Mobile, who remind you to use Speed Pass, today's way to pay. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Fenway Park. A cool evening at Fenway with blue skies above. We're ready for baseball. And the first pitch of this one in there for a strike to Jeremy Giambi, the left fielder for the Oakland A's. Derek Lowe returning to Fenway Park for the first time since his no-hitter here at Fenway. As that'll miss away to Giambi. After Giambi bats, we'll give you the lineups tonight for the Oakland A's. The Red Sox kind of jump-starting things here tonight as the 1-1 is in there for the strike. Derek Lowe stands at 5-1 with a 2.15 ERA. That's second best in the league to El Duque. El Duque at 2.13. And opponents only hitting 159 off Lowe. That's the best in the league. There are many impressive numbers about Derek Lowe, but one jumps out at you as of late. He has not allowed a home run in his last 70 innings pitched, which is the second longest active streak in the major leagues. Only behind Jeff Weaver of the Tigers has gone 75 and two-thirds innings without relinquishing a home run. And of course Derek coming off a win his last time out against the Athletics eight innings in that game six hits only the one earned run. Chopped right side right at Ray Sanchez stepped to his left and there's quickly one away. Let's take a look at that visiting Oakland A's starting lineup. You just saw Giambi, Randy Velarde will bat second at second base. Eric Chavez, 28 ribbies leading the A's. Jermaine Dye in right, Miguel Tejada at shortstop. Terrence Long in center field. Old friend Scott Hatterberg to DH. Greg Myers in there catching tonight after Ramon Hernandez last night. Carlos Pena at first base bats ninth. One down here in the first inning. Randy Velarde out after the first pitch. High chopped. Hillenbrand will come down with it, but no play. Leaped up in the air to get it, and an infield hit for Velarde. Take a look at the defense tonight for the Red Sox. Corshea Hillenbrand at third base. Nomar Garciaparra the shortstop. Ray Sanchez at second. And Tony Clark at first. Left to right, Ricky Henderson, Johnny Damon, and Jose Offerman getting his first out ever in right field. Jason Baratek behind the plate, and of course, Derek Lowe on the mound. One out, one on. Eric Chavez, the third baseman, stands in, totaling a 252 batting average, and he'll ground one towards Sanchez. Spins to second for one. On to first, close 
base and not in time. So Chavez able to beat it out at first, two outs in the inning. Ray Sanchez has to go to his left a couple of steps. Still gets the ball, rid of the ball very quickly to Nomar. Nomar across the bag, but Velarde hustling, excuse me, uh, Chavez hustling all the way will beat the play at first base. Certainly doesn't hurt when you hit out of that left side of the batter's box. Now Jermaine Dye, the right fielder. Getting a 263 on the year. Coming off that nasty leg fracture, still wears the protective gear just below the knee on that front left leg. Of course, he was actually carried off the field after he fractured that leg in the playoffs last year. A nasty injury, had no spring training this season, and joined the ball club at the end of April. The 0 1 from Derek Lowe. That is fouled off. The foot of die. 0 and 2. Well, that was very close. It looked like to the same area. Of course, Derek Lowe with that sinker ball running it down and in on die. He swings right on top of it. Oh, right wow, there. I think it got the pad, yeah, didn't it? Right there. Wow. That'll bring back some bad memories. Oof. Everything's been on the ground so far tonight off Derek Lowe. The 0 2. This is inside one and two. The A's are two and nine over the last 11 games and 12 and 18 since they started the year at six and two under Art Howe. The A's are 18 and 20 overall and eight games back of the Mariners. Already some room between the two, but you might remember. Last year around this time when the Oakland A's came to Fenway they were a struggling bunch and that was with Giambi and some of the other A's that they have lost and they caught fire arguably the best team in the second half of last season and found their way into the playoffs last year. Art Howe has signed an extension to his contract added another year onto it through next year. But he's in a tough division. Seattle on top. Anaheim, they played great baseball out there in the West as of late. Won six in a row. 2 2 to die. There goes Chavez. Throw down. It's going to be in time. They got him. Sanchez covers. Caught stealing two to four. And the A's are gone to the top of the first. They get nothing. Red Sox coming up from Fenway. Do not score in the top of the first inning. Red Sox coming to the plate in the last of the first. Ricky Henderson at the top of that Boston order. Johnny Damon, bad second in center field. No Mark Garcia par at shortstop. Brian Dabak commanding 321 average this month. Jay Hillenbrand at third base. Offerman making his debut in right field. Tony Clark at first base. Jason Veritek does the catching batting eighth. And Ray Sanchez rounds out the Boston nine at second base. The defense to the Athletics, they'll have Eric Chavez at third base. Miguel Tejada, the shortstop, Randy Velarde at second, and Carlos Pena at first. Left to right, Jeremy Giambi, Terrence Long, and Jermaine Dye. Greg Myers gets to start behind the plate, and on the mound, Eric Hillius. Three and two with a 6.19 ERA. A lot of strikeouts, 25 strikeouts in 32 innings. Red Sox roughed him up in his last outing out at the Coliseum. Only lasted two and a third innings, allowing six hits and eight earned runs. That was the shortest outing of his major league career. Jason Veritek had a three run home run off Hillius in that ball game. Well, he hopes to fare better here tonight at Fenway Park. Ricky Henderson, who had a terrific game last night, leading off the game last night and playing in left field, had two hits and two runs batted in. Ricky was two for five with two RBIs. And the first one misses for a ball. His two singles yesterday tied him with Roberto, Roberto Clemente for 26th place all time on the all time list. He needs two more singles to tie Eddie Murray for a 25th spot. And on and on and on it goes for milestones for Ricky Henderson throughout the year. I'm sure we will mention many. Two and one now to Ricky. 
Rakilius, formerly of the Mets organization, saw a tie in the big leagues with the Tigers. On the ground off the end of the bat, too, Tejada. He's got a great arm. Throws out Henderson for the first out in the first inning. Let's take a look at tonight's game notes brought to you by Sullivan Tire and Auto Service. Derek Lowe, May 9th at the Athletics. Eight innings, 21 ground ball outs in that game. The A's 224 road average is 13th in the American League. And the Red Sox, 29 straight games with a double. The longest streak for the Red Sox since uh, back in 1991. I didn't realize that. 29 straight with a double. But now I know. Johnny Damon. If they get one tonight, that'll be 30 straight. It's amazing. It's a pretty good stretch. Damon chops it back. Hillius off the backside of the mound. Recovers. Flips high. And that'll end up in the Boston dugout. Hillius made a pretty good play to get it as he had to go back up over the top of the mound. But... The toss up and over, skied over Carlos Pena. Johnny Damon will get to second base with one down. An ill-advised underhand flip to first base. It looked like he had plenty of time to plant himself and make the overhand throw. Makes a nice play going back down the mound, but then decides to make that underhand flip. And it was like slow pitch softball right up over the head of Pena. And that'll be a two-base error on the pitcher, Hillius. Here's Nomar. Checks in at 314. Four homers and 30 runs batted in for Garcia Parra. Nomar was one for three with a double yesterday. And there's 12 RBIs in the last 11 games. It's out of the way of that pitch. One and oh. He's the third best uh, defensive team in the league, but they were a little bit sloppy in the game last night. And... Uh, a poor play there by Eric Hillius to allow Johnny Damon to go to second base. Lewis certainly after his early exit last time wants to have a successful first inning just to get off on the right foot. You mentioned last time out against the Red Sox the shortest outing of his entire career. He was roughed up by the Red Sox just two and a third innings to the tune of eight earned runs. Omar out after the 2-0, pops it up right side of the Oakland infield. Randy Velarde ducks back, makes the catch. The wind may be somewhat of a factor here tonight. It is gusting pretty good at Fenway. Blowing from left to right tonight here at Fenway Park. Not quite as hard as it is earlier in the day, but still, as you can see by that flag above home plate, pretty good gust. I'd say about what? 25 miles an hour, 20 to 25, somewhere in that range. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Two down for Brian Dobbock. In the number four spot for the second consecutive night. Dobbock at 319. Five homers and 13 runs driven in so far for Brian. Ilias from the stretch. Moves the strike into Dobbock. Dabak and Eric Hillius, teammates coming up through the Mets system. Played on the same team last in 95. They were both in double A. Did everybody come through the Mets system? Pretty much everybody we faced as of late, yeah. Jeff Tam out of the bullpen for Oakland. Fouled off the left side. <laughs> and it's now nothing in two to Dabak. Let's see. Hillius was a fourth round pick of the Mets. So a non first round pick of the Mets, if that means anything to you. Seen a lot of them come through here as of late. Fourth round pick back in 1991. Never pitched in the majors for the Mets. Did for the Tigers for parts of two years. And now in his second season with the Oakland A's. The 0 2. Nabok takes it. 1 and 2 the count. Ilias out of the Oakland bullpen and in the rotation last year combined to go 5 and 0 oh for the Oakland A's did not lose a game. Johnny Damon at second, two down. 1 2 hit a ton to right field. Die looking up and watching that ball go. 
into the bullpen. A two-run home run for Brian Dombach. His sixth home run of the year. And the Red Sox out to the 2 nothing lead. six as you mentioned Don. Now Shea Hillenbrand. Shea batting fifth tonight for the Red Sox at 321 on the year. Seven homers 29 runs driven in. Hillenbrand was one for four here last night riding an eight game hitting streak. During that time hitting at 364. Sox getting to Hillius here so far for two runs in the bottom of the first inning. This is hit a time to left field. Giambi back looking up. That is gone. Solo home run for Shea Hillenbrand. Here's a. And the Red Sox put a three spot on the board in the bottom of the first inning. This is a good example when you give Major League teams extra outs, and especially where the Red Sox offense is going, they're going to make you pay. Daubach with a two-run home run. Hillenbrand with a line shot into the screen. Nine-game hitting streak now for Hillenbrand, his eighth home run of the season. That is the first time this season the Red Sox have gone back-to-back -back in terms of home runs. Jose Offerman making his debut in right field tonight for the Red Sox defensively. You have to go back to September 4th of 96 when he was a member of the Royals to even find him in the outfield. And a start for Kansas City in center field and that was only one time. He was scheduled to make a start for the Red Sox in Kansas City earlier this year in the outfield but that was rained out and tonight Jose in right field for Boston. Just trying to finish off the inning here. As with two outs, the Red Sox have gone back to back with home runs. A little pop up to Hada for the final out of the first inning. Red Sox scored three times. Dabar, Killenbrand both go deep. Three nothing Boston. First, let's take a look at the home run leaders around baseball. Brought to you by a New England Ford dealers. A-Rod with 12. Eric Chavez with 11. Carlos Delgado, 11. Tommy Batista tied at 10. In the National League, Sosa now with 15. Brookman, 14. Bonds and Floyd with 13 each. And Andrew Jones of Atlanta has 12. Jermaine Dye to lead it off. He was at the plate when Eric Chavez was thrown out trying to steal second base. Die to Hada and Terrence Long featured here in the second inning. No one chop foul back to the backstop. Well, Derek Lowe returns here to the site of his no hitter. First time he's pitched at Fenway Park since the no hitter. And a few trivia buffs, of course, remembering Dave Moorhead's no hitter back in 1965. The Red Sox beat Cleveland. And the pitcher in which they beat that day, of course, eventually became one of the Red Sox great fan favorites over the years and is broadcasting tonight at the ballpark at Fenway, of course, for Spanish radio. The one two. He struck him out. First strikeout for Derek Law opens up the second inning. That last outing against the Athletics, Derek only had one strikeout in that game in the eight innings. We mentioned all the ground ball outs. Again, that nasty sinker down and in on Jermaine Dye. Strikeout high nine against the Yankees back on April 15th. One down, it brings up Miguel Tejada. 285, six homers and 22 runs batted in. 
And just to finish that trivia question, the answer is Louis Tion. Lost in the no hitter to Dave Moorhead back in 1965. Well, Tiante doing the uh, Spanish broadcast of the game tonight. Here's Louis. Louis very happy to be back in the Red Sox organization. <laughs> I bet he keeps him loose over there, too. Yeah, I bet he does. Back to back case for Derek Lowe. Miguel Tejada is down. What was he like to play with? I know he probably kept uh, you guys loose. Uh, Louie was great. He was one of the funniest guys I've ever been around in a game of baseball. Uh, it didn't matter whether you were on a 10-game winning streak, losing streak. He was always the same. Took the pressure off everybody. Never blamed the fielder for making a mistake. Always took responsibility. And he didn't make many of them. Had the chance to sit down with him in spring training at great length. And we talked about his relationship with Carlton Fisk. As Tarek Long takes a pitch outside. And that was a lot of fun. I mean, he, it seemed as if those two went back and forth at each other. The only thing I'm disappointed, it's not that cold, really. Louis should have that window <laughs> open. <laughs> it's not showing you much there, is he? <laughs> Dropped out towards shortstop. Garcia Parr on the backhand. And the final out of the second. It's a 1 2 3 second inning. They played an inning and a half from Fenway. 3 0 Boston. of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. By New England Ford. Ford is leading the way with the best-selling cars and trucks. Log on to NewEnglandFord.com for details. And by Rocky Mount Cold Coors Light. Cold down easy. And on to the last of the second inning. Bottom third of the Boston order featured in the inning. Tony Clark, Jason Veritek, and Ray Sanchez to bat in the inning. Only getting his batting average up to 200 with his production here last night. Tony was one for two with a run batted in, walked twice in last night's game. And now very quietly is hit safely in six of his last seven games. He is trying to settle down into his outing tonight after giving up back to back home runs in the first was charged with an error that he committed and Clark ahead three and one and it's only walked twice last night his first at bat tonight takes the walk. Here's the first base on ball surrendered by Eric Hillius. This seems like over the last couple of nights, Tony Clark seeing the ball better at home plate. Had some pretty good swings in that game last night. It's going to make him feel better because it has really been a very big struggle for him. And well documented, wanted to get off to a very good start here in Boston and things started to snowball for Tony. And Veritek gets out of the way of that pitch. Meyer is sprawling to his right to recover that pitch. Lou Pinella was talking about Tony Clark when we were out in Seattle talking about the Red Sox. And he mentioned that when Tony gets going, you can't imagine how potent the Red Sox offense will be. I mean, they've done it all without someone that he regards as a very, very good hitter. And therefore, the strike, and it's one and one. And really, and he'll be the first to tell you has really not participated much in the Red Sox offense so far in the season. It's certainly showing signs of life and the Red Sox looking to him among others as Grady Little does to pick up the slack in the absence of Manny Ramirez. Well, at the end of the bat foul left side one and two. This Manny's going to be uh, back home in Miami for the remainder of the week. Probably return to Boston Monday or Tuesday of next week, and it's not a conditioning program. They miss Manny out there in left field. Hauled off 
again off to the left side still one and two. Yeah, and apparently going to see his doctor down there after they take the split off he's wearing the splint currently. And then we'll come back to Boston and be looked at. A little want to give him some time off and then he'll come back and begin to do some conditioning. Good news from Todd Nixon. Apparently he's feeling better today. Still dealing with the stomach virus. Did he go? They will appeal and no is the answer. Marvin Hudson, third base umpire. Two and two now to Veritek. And it is early, but Dustin Hermanson threw off the mound yesterday, and by all accounts, things went very well. He will throw a simulated game here early next week. And then head to Fort Myers to begin his rehab. In the dirt and a full count now to Veritek. Everything right over the top from Hill. Yes, the fastball, curveball, and changeup. Ray Sanchez waits on deck. Nobody out. Last of the second inning. Veritek backs out. And the 29 year old right hander from the stretch. Popped up. Foul off third. Myers and Chavez. It'll be the third baseman, Chavez. One down here in the bottom of the second inning. to Ray Sanchez last night had his hitting streak snapped it halted at 14 games during those 14 games he hit at 451 eight runs batted in but he's all for two showing last night ended that streak he did walk on two occasions that's a hitting streak you know yeah. 451 that's a hitting streak <laughs> Sometimes you're hitting 15, 16 games at like a 270 flip. That doesn't get it done. <laughs> and his batting average here at Fenway at 381, fourth in the American League in that category. Squibs that foul, nothing in two. And if you look for surprises in terms of productivity from the offensive side of things, I would have to say he's pretty much at the top of the list in that category. You knew about his defense. I'm not so sure you expected as much offensively that he has produced so far this year. One and two now to Sanchez. I would certainly go along with you, Don. Uh, probably the biggest surprise, and also Shea Hillenbrand. Is Homer tonight part of the three nothing Boston advantage? What has surprised you most about the way he has hit this year? Is it his patience, perhaps? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's much more patient hitter. He's getting a good hit as counts, driving the ball more, much more compact swing than a year ago, better balance. Looks like a totally different guy. A little looper out towards left center field, and that will fall in no man's land. Clark had to wait. He moves up 90 feet to second. A triangle created by Tejada, Giambi, and Long, and the falls in between. And Sanchez will start a new hitting streak here tonight. By making contact on two strikes, trying to stay away from the strikeout, and just bloops it in between three players for the base hit. Probably would have taken that last night, huh, to extend that streak? Certainly would have. Now back up to the top of the order, Ricky Henderson bounced to shortstop his first time. At 
Sox have two on, one away as they continue to get production from the bottom part of the Boston order. Clark walked to begin the inning. Veritek fouled out. Ray Sanchez has single. So two on, one away. And Ricky getting his second at bat of the night. Thought about it. Did he offer? No. Very close. And Lance Barksdale said he did not. Two and no. Ricky has discarded the hood gear that he had on last night. He had the big hood up over his head. Even wore it with the helmet on last night. He's talking about uh, not enjoying playing in this cold weather before the game. Well, Ricky disagrees with that. He doesn't often agree with strikes. Ricky jumping back, but it looked like uh, the ball had the inside corner. When you draw as many walks as he has, uh, there's a lot of chit chat that goes on between <laughs> himself and the umpires. In the air to right field, Jermaine Dye will head back. Still going. Dye will have that get up over his head and one hop into the seats. A ground roll double. That will play one run as Tony Clark will come around and the Red Sox lead it four to nothing and Ricky continues to produce. Ricky showing some opposite field power. Dye playing pretty shallow out there in right field. We mentioned last night how they're shading him in that direction. But this clearly over the head of Jermaine Dye and one hop into the stands for the ground rule double. And the 506th career double tying Babe Ruth for 32nd on the all time list for Ricky. And the first one to Johnny Damon. Damon reached on the two base error committed by Eric Hillius. Jermaine Dye was playing shallow on dog box ball as well. I'm surprised, especially with the way he's running, that he's playing that shallow. Not surprised so much uh, with Ricky at the plate. Did watch him go back on that. It did look like he was still scuffling a little bit, limping as he went back to, to make the play on that. I'm just watching him run the bases, he has done it. Sort of gingerly, of course, you can't blame him after the fracture of the leg. It does not appear that he's 100% in regards to running. Uh, this guy's an excellent outfielder, too. Well, Johnny Damon is retired this time. Ricky Henderson at second, Ray Sanchez at third, and Nomar will now bat with two down. Garcia Parra popped out to the second baseman, Randy Velarde, in the first inning. After that pitch, nothing in one. Lamar tied for fifth in the American League and runs batted in with 30 on the year. And it evens up at one and one to Nomar. Sacks with a major league best 26 and 9 heading into tonight's action. This is fouled up in our general direction and caught. How about that? That's good. It's nice. It's take it, take it by. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to get all the way up here. Watch this. Nice play. Wow. You weren't bailing out either. It wasn't even close to me. It's outside. Now what are you going to do with the baseball? Probably give it to our friend up here who's with us tonight. That's right. That is terrific. There it is. Now that is a rubbed up baseball. A 2-2. Two -two. Did he go? No. Says Lance Barksdale. And a full count. This is that Mississippi mud they talk about that they rub these baseballs up with? I guess. <laughs> that one's kind of nasty, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's in rough shape. This is an actual... Hmm. Payoff pitch. 
Popped up foul. This may be dive out there. <laughs> it's a playable. And caught very nicely by Greg Myers over by the cutoff area where the seats jet out. And that'll do it in the inning. The Red Sox had a run to their total. We are through two from Fenway, 4 nothing Boston. Will Sox fans keep the Fenway experience going a little longer in 2002? The Diamond at Fenway, located right behind Grandstand Section 30, will now serve as Fenway's own sports bar from the seventh inning until two hours after the game. So come see live post-game shows and interviews or just watch a late game on one of the 14 TVs. On to the top of the third inning, 4 nothing. Red Sox on top. Austin scoring three times in the first, adding a run in the last of the second. And old friend Scott Hatterberg to lead it off in the DH spot tonight. 276, four homers, 13. Runs batted in. The beach ball has come on the field down in the right field corner. That'll be Jose's first play down in right field tonight. <laughs> He's in that beach ball back in the stands. He was out there working early this afternoon. Tommy Harper hitting him balls uh, out in right field. This is not an easy right field, certainly to make your debut in. And then the wind was howling in that direction during BP. Now the flag is pretty much still out there in left center field, but it was moving out there pretty good. Eric Lowe has given up one hit. The infield hit to Randy Velarde in the first inning. That's been it. Chopped right side. Clark will extend over. He'll need Derek Lowe's there in plenty of time. And Scott Hatterberg is the first out of the third inning. Once again, a lot of ground ball outs in the early going here for Derek Lowe. Always a good sign. Betting A, number 28, the catcher, Greg Myers. Well, Greg Myers, we did not catch last night. Ramon Hernandez was in there for the Oakland A's. And had a very good game last night, especially from a defensive standpoint. Two plays come to mind. The play that he made at the plate on Johnny Damon and then the Perfect throw to third to throw out Jose Offerman who's trying to steal at third base. Myers offers intentionally it's one and one. Myers had a very good April hitting at 417 as he grounds this through the left side into left field. Oakland's second hit of the night. Myers aboard with one down here in the third inning. Looked like a curveball that time from Derek Lowe. Myers just slapping it to the opposite field for the base hit. I believe that's the first time uh, Myers has faced Derek Lowe. Myers had been 0 for 9 in May. You mentioned that he hit 417 in April. He was 0 for 9 in May until that base hit through the left side. Northeastern's Carlos Pena batting ninth tonight for Oakland again. And he swings at the first pitch. Hillenbrand will try to initiate the inning ending double play, but Pena gets down the line well and is able to beat it out at first. They do dispose of the lead man in Greg Myers for the inning second out, and Pena will be at first. Sometimes it takes a while for that second baseman. He's playing a little bit to pull with the left hander up. You see Hillenbrand being very deliberate with the throw. And a little bit late at first base to get the double play. Jeremy Giambi grounded out to second base his first time. This away. Interesting to see how Jeremy Giambi feels about playing without his brother. I'm sure you may like it in terms of having that shadow kind of going somewhere else, and he has been able to play 
here by himself this year and started off very well. Of course, he played in Kansas City by himself as well. It had to be interesting for him when Jason came back into town into Oakland and they sold out the place really to boo his brother when they came back with the Yankees in that first series in Oakland. But Oakland's clubhouse definitely a loose place to be. You often hear it compared to a fraternity type situation. A lot of younger players. Very good success over the last few years getting to the postseason. Under Art Howe. Howell down the left field line, back in out of play. Two outs in the visiting half of the third. Boston on top, 4 0. Main hit first. And the payoff pitch. It was fouled off. Tampa Bay with a quick lead on the Yankees. Six nothing in the second inning. It's against El Duque too, yeah. right? Yeah. El Duque scheduled to go as this is fouled off. Giambi will hobble around a little bit. Get a big piece of him. As I mentioned, the top two uh, guys in ERA going tonight, El Duque for the Yankees, 2.13, and then Derek Lowe, 2.15. Right now, Lowe's wearing out this lineup, but Jermaine Dye got one off the shin, a foul ball, and now Giambi. Happens a lot with sinker ball pitches, especially if there's a good sink to it. You hit right on top of it, and Foul it right off your knee, your ankle, your shin, your foot. Oh. I don't know if the instep would look like. Hey, while we got a little break, we got a, a guest up in the booth tonight, DJ, who is uh, seeing his first Red Sox game tonight. And uh, asked him who his favorite player was. And his favorite player is Lou Maloney. And Lou was nice enough to sign a bat for him. A sign of baseball for him, so he's having a heck of a time, right? <laughs> From Sturbridge, correct? Yeah. Matter of fact, Lou's sister was his teacher in school. We're having a grand time here tonight. The 3 2 is ball four. Veritek held it, but there's the first walk of the night given up by Derek Lowe. So the inning will continue with two down here in the top of the third. Number eight, the second baseman, Randy Villardi. There's Randy Villardi. He reached on an infield hit in the first inning, one of two hits given up by Derek Lowe. Sox going back to back with home runs in the bottom of the first inning. Ryan Daubach with a two run shot, then Shea Hillenbrand followed with a solo shot. Daubach was to right, Hillenbrand's to left. As this is foul down the line. Look out. Yeah, that's a, oof. that's a tough play down there. Just a rocket. Look at that uh, hustle. As soon as the ball got by, hustling right out to try to get it. Not intimidated at all by the hard line drive. <laughs> In there for the strike to Velarde. One and two the count. Randy Velarde, one for five last night. It's safely now in six of eight games that he's returned from the DL. A one-two. Not about it. Did he offer? No, says Lance Barksdale. He's been very busy down there in appeals. Two and two. And so far, all appeals have gone the way of the batter. Carlos 
Pena stands at second base. Jeremy Giambi at first. Two outs. And Lowell ready now with the 2-2. Hits him. And that will load the bases. So down to first to go Velarde. And after two outs here, the Oakland A's now have the bases loaded. Well, at this rate, they're all going to be bruised up before this is over. Jermaine Dye taking a foul ball. Giambi taking a foul ball. Now Velarde being hit by the fastball. Like right on the thigh. And a painful experience for some of these Oakland hitters in the early part of this game. A look at Jermaine Dye, who will be on deck. Eric Chavez. Rounded into a fielder's choice in the first inning. And then was caught trying to steal second base. Base is loaded for the A's. They're trying to grab some runs here, dealing with a four run deficit in the top of the third inning. Now there's a 379 hitter with the bases loaded. Old glove winner a year ago for the Oakland A's at third base. And you might remember if you stayed up late with us out in Oakland, he made his debut in the outfield. David Justice was injured in the game out there. And Eric Chavez moved to the outfield, old glove third baseman. is loaded. So the four grand slams career wise for Chavez one of those against the Red Sox against Brian Rose. Taking all the way and he takes a strike three and one now to Chavez. Had a very good night last night three for four in the game. Over the last seven games, has really picked it up. He's hitting at 384 over the last seven games. Went through a tough stretch prior to that as he fouls this off, and it's now a full count. When the Red Sox visited Oakland, he was in the midst of an 0 for 23 slump. He was able to break out of that against the Red Sox. This is loaded here in the third. And the payoff pitch. Chavez grounds it to first, and Clark will gobble it up and take it alone. Derek Lowe gets out of the inning unscathed as the Oakland A's leave the bases loaded. We're through two and a half, four nothing Boston. exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Pepsi. The joy of Pepsi. And by Applebee's. Applebee's neighborhood grill and bar. Eating good in the neighborhood Applebee's. Ready for the last of the third at Fenway Park. Red Sox on top 4 nothing. Scoring in each of the first two innings tonight. Ryan Daubach, a very big part of that scoring, a two-run home run in the first inning, and he will lead things off as we head to the last of the third. Achilles went just two and a third against the Red Sox in Oakland. He's trying to go deeper into tonight's game than he did last time. So far, things have not gone particularly well. Daubach over the last 17 games at 375 and tonight collected his sixth home run of the year. Was last year hitting a career high 22 home runs. <laughs> Oakland now second in the league in terms of home runs. Leading the league when the Red Sox were in Oakland. They have dropped out of that category. The Yankees uh, taken off. 
fifty six home runs for the Yankees coming into today's action. And the Oakland A's have fifty two as a club. He is ready with the two one. That's in there for the strike and it's now two and two. Bobak and Hillenbrand each home ring tonight for the Red Sox and the Red Sox now with 44 home runs on the season. O'Shea waiting on deck. Dabak and Hillenbrand went back to back in the first. And now a full count to Dabak. Final game of the series tomorrow night here at Fenway. Barry Zito against Frank Castillo in the conclusion of this series. Albach pops it up right side of the Oakland infield. Randy Bellardi extending to the outfield. And the first out in the bottom of the third inning. Nice clear skies tonight at Fenway. And right now the twilight, which is very difficult on those pop-ups. Number 29. The see Bellardi there telling everybody to point out the baseball, which I never quite understood anyway, because <laughs> if you can't see it, <laughs> how are you going to find it in, in the twilight? Once you, once you lose it, very seldom do you find it again. <laughs> but you'll see infielders, uh, especially this time of night, ball goes up in the air to the outfield. They'll point to it, try to help the outfielders out in any way they can. Jay Hillenbrand now with a nine game hitting streak as a result of his hit in the first inning. It was a big one. Home run that landed in the screen and left. Jay's eighth home run of the year. I mentioned the Yankees were down early. They get down six nothing. It's now eight nothing in the bottom of the second inning in New York. El Duque scheduled to pitch there for the Yankees and doesn't look like things are going very well. But things are going very well here. Red Sox on top four nothing. And heading into tonight's action with a three game lead over the Yankees in the AL East. Big cut from Shea. Now two and one. Terrence Long coming on now. Will make the catch late to break. And they got a read on it. And Hillenbrand is the second out of the third inning. This again looked like Terrence Long might have had a little problem there with the ball off the bat. Who we got in next innings after the game? Who is the special guest tonight? Mm, John Burkett. Last night's winner. Now 4-0 on the year. Two down here in the third inning. Four in a row retired by Eric Hillius. And it brings up Jose Offerman, who has been productive over the last nine games at 343 and really the entire season. And again hitting at 312 tonight. who spent the beginning portion of their season playing within their own division in the West against Seattle and Anaheim and now play they're in the midst of a stretch in which they play 30 of 36 games against the AL East chopped right side towards Pena Pena will flip to Hillius and that'll do it first one two three inning of the night for Eric Hillius we've played three from Fenway four nothing Boston three at Fenway the 2002 Red Sox media guide is now available you'll find over 500 pages filled with facts and stats on the current team records and historical data complete information on the Red Sox minor league system and players and much more to receive your copy send a check or money order for $16 the Red Sox media guide for Yorkie Way Boston Mass 02215 what is that Catted in Florida? Oh no, elementary. Elementary. <laughs> elementary school. I thought it said Florida. 
That's a two at first look. Jermaine Dye leads it off. A strikeout victim in the second inning. One of two strikeouts for Derek Lowe tonight. In there for the strike and dies down nothing in two. I was 0 for 4 last night in the first game of the series. 0 for 1 tonight and that'll miss down low. 1 and 2. that there was no spring training for Jermaine Dye this year with the injury. He did make some rehab starts in AAA Sacramento and he's a strikeout victim for the second time tonight. Third K for Derek Lowe. Time now for the Aplac trivia question. What Red Sox second baseman is the highest single season batting average since 1981? The answer for you in the next half inning. Miguel Tejada struck out his first time. Part of back to back case for Derek Lowe in the second inning. Broken bat rounder at Tony Clark who will handle it alone to retire Tejada. And there's quickly two outs in the fourth inning. Kansas City Royals Tony Pena There's some we thought maybe that Buck Showalter may be a guy who would end up with a Kansas City managerial position but Tony Pena yeah, that was a little bit of surprise I thought uh, when we were hearing that Buck Showalter was going to get that job Pena across the bench coach for Jimmy Williams down in uh, Houston on the ground off the bat of Long and the brand behind it the throw is there and Oakland's gone one two three in the fourth inning three and a half complete from Fenway four nothing Red Sox. Fenway is the Red Sox out to the early lead on top four nothing and that's thanks to a three run bottom of the first inning and back to back home runs for the Red Sox. Ryan Daubach with a two run shot into the bullpen in right field. As Jermaine Dye watched it leave and for the first time in 2002 the Red Sox go back to back. Jay Hillenbrand strokes his eighth home run of the year. And the Red Sox out to the four nothing lead. Ricky Henderson chipped in with an RBI double in the second inning. Ilias giving up four runs over the first three innings. Derek Lowe four shutout innings so far. And the Oakland A's left the bases loaded in the third inning. On to the last of the fourth, bottom third of the Red Sox order. And Tony Clark waving at the first one. Tony walked his first time up in the second inning. Shallow left field. Jeremy Giambi moving in. And he'll make the catch for the first out. That's now six in a row retired by Eric Hillius. We have the answer to our Aflac trivia question. What Red Sox second baseman has the highest single season batting average since 1981? And the answer is none other than Jerry Remy. Did you know that, Jerry Remy? No, I didn't, didn't know that. <laughs> I think 81 was a strike shortened season, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so there should be an asterisk next to this? Is that what you're saying? Well, I think we had six weeks off in the middle of the season because of the strike. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, I told you, you still qualified. Play, you had the number play of, a few more games, you're below 300. <laughs> now, I thought that would have been Jose Offerman or something. Let's see. 84, Marty Barrett hit 303. 136 games. Yeah, yours was in 87 games. 307. Dave Stapleton in 1980 hit 321 in 94 games. Jeff Fry 312 in 
97 and John Ballantin with a 306 other second baseman for the Red Sox 1997. Didn't he get some bad news today John Ballantin to on rotate a cuff. Yeah he's going on the DL apparently for the Mets. I don't know how he did it. I didn't see the uh, video. I just saw the scroll. We're talking about Jermaine Dye not running apparently well. Valentin doesn't look like he's been running very well either. We're completely back to where he was at one time. Hercules is now retired six Red Sox in a row. One out in the fourth. And the 2-2 two -two to Veritek. Nice foul off the left side. Seems like Jason has fouled off a lot of Eric Hillier's pitchers tonight. Here's pitch number 71. And he strikes out Veritek. He went upstairs to strike out Jason Veritek, and that's the first K of the night. For Eric Hillius. Yeah, Hillius has had some pretty big strikeout games this year. He had the nine against the Yankees a couple of starts ago. Fastball up and out of the strike zone. Veritek cannot stay off it. Very seldom do you make contact on that kind of a pitch. It was about neck high. And on the number nine hitter, Ray Sanchez. Number nine hitter in name only. Sanchez hitting at 333 coming into tonight's game. Just had a 14 game hitting streak snapped here last night and single in his first at bat tonight to bring that average up to 339. So he bats ninth, but I don't think that qualifies him as the number nine hitter. And there for the strike. Nothing in two of the count. <laughs> I guess it probably does. I mean, you're batting ninth, you are technically the number nine hitter, but he's not your everyday number nine hitter, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> You're not helping. The uh, O2 well, is foul. <laughs> let me try to help you out of this mess that you've got yourself into. <laughs> what you're trying to say is with the numbers he's put up this year, you would expect that from maybe somewhere else in the lineup, not your typical right. number nine hitter. But he has been the nine hitter. You're right. For the Red Sox. On both counts, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Grounded towards Tejada. And plenty of time to get Sanchez. It's another one, two, three inning for Hillius, who's now sent down eight Red Sox in a row. We're through four. Red Sox on top, four nothing. <laughs> coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Miller Lite. Life is best told in a place called Miller Time. And by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. The year to be here, that's kind of the uh, buzzword around here, isn't it? it? certainly is. And so far, it really has been the year to be here. As the Red Sox make a bid for their 27th victory of the year. And here we are on May 15th, and the Red Sox have not yet lost 10 games. Leadoff hitter is Scott Hatterberg with a count of one and one. Hatterberg rounded out to first base his first time. It's at this time to the second baseman. One away. Ooh, Derek Lowe is now retired five A's in a row. Number 28, the catcher. So only given up two hits Myers. through the first four and a third innings. He's walked a batter, hit a batter, and has struck out three. Greg Myers singled his first time right back up the middle. Nomar spins, turns, fires, and gets him. Nomar Garcia Parr shows once again he is one of the game's best. Two down. No shortage of range up the middle between Garcia Parr and Sanchez. Nomar, that ball's on the second base side of the bag. Spins around and makes the accurate throw to Clark. That ball had to slow up some. I don't know if it hit Derek Lowe or hit the mound, but it looked like it did slow up enough for Nomar to get over there to make the play. Well, Carter.
Carlos Pena got it into a fielder's choice his first time. He went after the first pitch in his first at bat. This time lets it go by. It lists in the last 20 at bats. So Carlos Pena with a base hit here tonight. And only the third hit given up by Derek Lowe. Well, that'll make the Carlos Pena fans here from Northeastern happy. I think they want to see the Red Sox win, but they'd like to see Pena do well. Is that how it works over there at Northeastern? I think so, yeah. I think Number the, seven. As we mentioned, what is it been since 1942 that the major league has come from Northeastern? And there will likely be another, and hopefully it'll be with the Red Sox. And Greg Montabano, the fine pitching prospect the Red Sox have in the organization. He is a Northeastern product as well. Giambi. Right after that first one, he grounded to second in the first, walked in the third. Yeah, they get him again. That's the second time tonight for Giambi. <laughs> this gets very, very aggravating. And painful. <laughs> Last at bat. Same thing. Looks at the same spot right off the instep. I think right now, Giambi would rather see anybody but a sinker ball pitcher in the game. He's down, nothing in two. Two outs here in the visiting half of the fifth. Pena at first, held on by Clark. And the 0-2. to get him to chase. It's funny how he found that exact same area once again. It always works that way, doesn't it? Two. Again away and evens up at two and two. Yeah, they seem to find the weak link. Rod Carew used to say that he used to try to hit the ball in the direction of the poorest infielder. And I always noticed when I was playing against Rod, there were a lot of ground balls coming in my direction. <laughs> Hope he didn't take you personally. <laughs> Clark makes the catch in foul ground. That looks fair to me, but Charlie Rutherford knows better. The umpire has to call the home plate umpire until it passes first, so the call made by the home plate umpire. Take a look right down that first base line, and let's see. Yeah, it looks like clock clearly there with the glove and ball and foul territory. Tony was in fair territory, but not the baseball. Nice call by Charlie Relifant. Yeah, I'll give it to Charlie. That was a good call. And quickly out from in behind home plate. Two and two. Sliced foul down the left field line. It'll kick off the facade back down into the seats. Jeremy Giambi. Well put together. 5'11, 216 pounds. 27 years of age. Full count to Giambi. This is now his third season in Oakland. Of course, two of them spent with his brother Jason. Last year he hit a 283 and homered 12 times. Likely to surpass that. He's already got seven home runs this year. 3-2 in the air. Stroke pretty well back by the wall. That will grab some wall. Pena is still running. He's going to try to score all the way from first base. The throw is not going to be in time, and Oakland has their first run. Pena didn't slide either. He went in standing. Of course, the runner off with two outs in a full count. And the up off the wall single for Jeremy Giambi drives in Oakland's first run. Almost a mental mistake here by Pena. He's off with the, as you mentioned, the two outs. The ball clearly hit off the wall hard. Nice play hit and relay by Johnny Damon to Garcia Parra. Now, they make this a lot closer than I ever thought it was going to be. Wow. Pena might have got deep by Veritek. Veritek might have been standing there acting like he wasn't going to get the throw, and he was almost out. 
They, they do teach sliding in Northeastern, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, though, that's the responsibility of the man on deck. He's got to get up there and tell them to slide. Giambi only at first base after that hit the wall and the throw went to the plate. Malardi swinging and missing. One and one the count. Tony Clark will hold on Giambi. Giambi, one of the fourth hit of the night for the Oakland A's off Derek Lowe. This is chopped at Nomar. Tough hot. Handles it. Flips underhanded and in time to get the lead man Giambi. And to conclude the top of the fifth inning. Well, Oakland gets their first run of the night halfway through this one. 4-1 Red Sox. Four and a half completed Fenway. The Red Sox have the 4-1 lead. Well, this season on Nesson, You'll get extra interviews, extra highlights, and extra analysis on Extra Innings, Nesson's expanded postgame show, brought to you by Keyspan, putting more energy into life. After the last inning, the action's just beginning. I haven't seen that one before. That's a new one, huh? I don't see. I don't, I'm reading it, so I don't get oh. to see the the promo. I think they took us out. I don't think we're in there anymore. The uh, new promo. Well, we're not really part of the extra innings anyway. Well, we contribute. Ricky Henderson will lead it off in the last of the fifth inning. Ricky one for two, a double, and another RBI tonight for Ricky. Uh, two hits and two RBIs last night. is now retired eight Red Sox in a row as it misses inside Ricky one and one let's check on the Yankees they were trailing eight to nothing to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays and it's still eight nothing into the top of the fourth the Yankee Stadium so the news is good the Yankees are losing and the Red Sox are winning Lucas who gave up three runs in the first Oh, Henderson sends it to center field. Terrence Long wanders back. One away. Well, congratulations to the Celtics as they move on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, what's uh, New Jersey? I think is got a Number game tonight, 18. don't they? They could wrap it up tonight. You're correct. Yeah. It would be something if the Celtics and Lakers had the chance to go head to head again. It'd just be like uh, old times. Here's Johnny Damon who reached on an error two base error in the first and rounded back to the mound in the second. Not sure I think the Celtics swept the Lakers during the regular season in the two games that they matched up against each other. I know they beat them out in L.A. I think they beat them here too. On the ground and foul. That'll get into the Boston dugout at the tail end. Johnny Damon batting second in behind Ricky Henderson. And a drag bunt down the first base line. And safe at first is Damon. He eluded the tag of Carlos Pena, who laid it out, making a bid to get Damon on the way by. But somehow Johnny slipped by. And is on with an infield hit on the fifth hit for the Red Sox tonight. Nice drag bunt here by Johnny Damon. You'd like to get it maybe a little bit more to the first baseman's right. The heck of a play by Pena, but just missed the tag as Damon gets the corner of the bag. Hey, you really had no chance to flip it to the pitcher because uh, Damon was going to beat him to the bag. So that's the only play he had. Eight infield hits leads the Red Sox with Johnny Damon. Omar Garcia Parra 0 for 2 tonight. He has popped out to second, fouled out to the catcher. And fouls this off the right side. 
little bit tougher for Damon to steal hitting in front of Nomar because Nomar swings at so many first pitches. Damon with 10 steals on the season. He's been caught a couple of times. Johnny Damon, the pitch is outside, and the throw not in time. Picked off, but already you covered, and in the second with effect is Johnny Damon jumping up into scoring position with one down. 11 steals now for Damon. Lofton leads the lead with 16, Beltron 12, and then Damon and Suzuki with uh, 11 each. Picked a good pitch, too. Breaking ball, head for a slide, throw not near the second base bag. Damon's headed for third. That's a strike, and the throw is also a strike. Thrown out of third base is Johnny Damon, Greg Myers. Uh, Damon steals second on him, but he throws Johnny out of third for the inning second out. Well, Red Sox, the last couple of nights, have had a couple of guys thrown out of third base. Offerman last night, and now Johnny Damon, but the crowd likes it. They like the effort by Damon. Had a very close play, too. That tag was up around the elbow and the hand. Looks like it might have been on the bag. Omar cranks this foul back into the seats. Well, Grady Little earlier in the year said the Red Sox would likely run more on the road than they do at home, but it seems like lately they've been running a lot here at Fenway. Well, you know, you'll get the questions. Why do you run with Nomar at the plate and all that stuff? Well, you, the fact is, if you're going to be aggressive, you've got to stay aggressive. And if you're going to steal bases, you are going to get thrown out every now and then. In the air to right, Jermaine Dye has it sized up. And that'll do it in the bottom of the fifth inning. We played five for Fenway, 4-1 Boston. Back at Fenway, 4-1, the Red Sox have the lead. Let's take a look at the team stolen base leaders. Uh, brought to you by Mobile Speed Pass. The Mariners on top with a good lead over Kansas City and Chicago. The Marlins with 46, the Reds 33, and the Expos with 30, the Team Steel leaders in both the American and National League. Best wow. wishes to Eileen on her retirement. Well, good luck and enjoy life. <laughs> Eric Chavez leads it off as we head to the sixth. Chavez die and Tejada. And Chavez turns on this, fouling it off the right side. Eric Chavez grounded into a fielder's choice in the first, grounded out in the third. Both for two tonight. As Derek Lowe works into the sixth inning. Giving up just the one run came last inning. Popped up, fouled off third. Hillenbrand ranges over behind the third base coach's box. One down. And getting back to Johnny Damon, that last inning on stealing third base, to say, well, why would no more? That's the time you go with one out because you want to try to get the third base with less than two outs so they can drive you in on a ground ball with the infield or a sacrifice fly. If you're a base dealer, that's the proper time to go. Now, with two outs, obviously, you don't want to be thrown out at third. But you got to stay aggressive. Base dealers can't turn it on and off. That's why I was a little surprised when Grady said, well, we'll run more. Obviously, you're going to run more on the road, but you've got to run at home, too. These guys can't be home for two weeks, not run, and then go on the road and expect to steal. It doesn't happen that way. Let me ask you this. With all those big guns in behind you, did you often hear you probably shouldn't have taken off in that situation with the guys that <laughs> yeah, I should be behind you? I certainly did. <laughs> I always said that when I was with the Red Sox uh, under Don Zimmer, I ran with the yellow light. I didn't have the green light. I didn't have the red light. I had the yellow light. Run with caution. <laughs> be sure you're safe every time you go. <laughs> That's kind of tough, isn't it? That is. It is. And there it is, John Valentin placed on the DL with rotator cuff. I don't know how John did that. I haven't seen any of the video, but that is unfortunate. And a setback for John, who found a place to play this year, and from all accounts, was doing pretty well with the Mets. 
placed on the DL. The 2 2 is waved at by Die. He's had a tough night against Derek Lowe. Lowe has four strikeouts. Three of them belong to Jermaine Die. Two down. Yeah, it really has. And all the strikeouts from Lowe against Die have been on the sinking the fastball. That time it's Cantana. away from him. Remember, he's got a couple that have been down and in. That time away. And he just, uh, that Jermaine completely fooled up there tonight. Two down, Miguel Tejada has struck out, grounded out. This broken back grounder handled by Hillenbrand, the lip of the grass, and it's a quick and easy one, two, three, sixth inning for Derek Lowe. On to the bottom of the sixth, four one Boston. Exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Corona. Relax and enjoy an ice cold Corona Extra. Last of the sixth inning from Fenway. Yeah, Fox on top four to one. I'm sorry, Jerry. Oh, it was quite a moment here between innings when we received a phone call in the booth from President Bush congratulating you on that fine catch earlier in the ball game. <laughs> uh, oh, that not, lid. Now that is nice. That is nice. Now that is all purpose. Wear that in the rain. I want to get one of those for Aruba next uh, next winter. Big floppy hat. I can see you in that. That'd be a good look oh, for that's, you. That's nice. Ryan Daubach leads it off. And pops it up. Left side. Chavez calling. Tejada's behind him. But Chavez will make the catch a stride on the outfield grass. So W called right here to the booth in between. Yeah, you happen to run out to, I don't know, get some peanuts or something. And uh, it, was, it was the president and wanted to just congratulate you on that fine catch. Did you notice the game. obstacles that I had to go through? There are two antennas here in yeah. the booth on the left side. I had to reach, cross them, and then yeah. lean out. See, these are the antennas. And then, yeah, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah. All right, run away. You did notice the athletic ability there. As a professional athlete yourself, you saw. Oh, I was very impressed. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's another out. one. Well, I'm Dive. Get this one. Jump out the window. Go <laughs> <laughs> and tune out of Hill and Brand. There we go. They're going to show it. Yeah, no. Yeah, right, comes right over the time. Now look at look, you're fighting all this stuff here. This yes. antennas, everything. Wow, that was better than I thought. Roll <laughs> away, and it's now one and two to Hillenbrand. Just Nomar. received the call also from the AT&T people. They like to keep playing that replay yeah. because it's a <laughs> good advertisement. <laughs> yeah, they added that here while we were away on the West Coast. Some of the additions here at the ballpark. Along with the red clay, which I really like. This is a foul ball just outside of third. Down the left field line. Now they had the red clay in the infield to begin the year, but while the club was on the road, the red clay now all the way around on the warning track. Yep, yeah, well, this is all brand new. They have taken the uh, the on-deck circles away where Veritek got hurt a year ago making that diving play that rubberized stuff that's gone the rubberized stuff around home plate that had the Red Sox sign that is gone now it's all grass this area here used to be that kind of rubber stuff that had the Red Sox on it here you go no nope. popped up foul chance for Myers who moves over but it goes three rows deep and out of his reach. Jay Hillenbrand homered in the first inning. He and Daubach went back to back. Two run shot for Daubach. Solo shot for Hillenbrand. That's got to be a very different year for Shea Hillenbrand who last year admitted that he was kind of in the Trying to stay in the big leagues mode last year. This year coming in with a lot better of idea what to expect. Lifts this in the air to deep center field. That is back and off the wall and reaching over. 
Carter Hillenbrand will get to second base with a one out double. Back in dead center field. Second hit of the night for Shea Hillenbrand. Well, the Red Sox with two doubles now in this game tonight to extend that streak to 30 straight games. I thought this ball had a chance to go out of straightaway center field. You see the fan reach over. There's no contact, I don't believe, though. No fan interference with this. Just caroms off the wall, and uh, there'll be a double for Hillenbrand. Number 30, the right fielder, Jose Offerman. Oakland all of a sudden with left-handed action in their bullpen. As Eric Hillius. Here's that left-handed action. Mike McNanty warming in the pen. Hillius, who went two and a third last time against Boston, looked like he may get chased early in this one. A three-run first inning, which included back-to-back -back home runs. Another run in the second, and Boston has not scored since. Really calmed down quite nicely tonight. And at one point had retired nine Red Sox in a row. Offerman 0 for 2. His first start for the Red Sox in right field. He has not seen any action in right field as of yet. A ball has not found its way to Offerman. working from the stretch with Hill and Brand at second base in the dirt good play by Myers to his right see what happens later on in the ball game well, last night Nelson went out there defensively at the end of the game to take Daubach spot when the Red Sox had a lead and I wonder if he'll do that again tonight with Jose out in right field To be the 100th pitch of the night for Eric Hillius, and he misses with it, three and one. Nice to see Brian Nelson get into his first major league game last night. Did not have a chance to bat. He did play defensively, as you alluded to. There's a strike and a full count. Here's a look at him. Talk to Rich Bombard today, the pitching coach for the Pawtucket Red Sox and coaching staff in Pawtucket. Very, very happy for Brian Nelson. Any he chance to play in the major leagues for the first time. Certainly one of their best players in Pawtucket to begin the year. That's up and away, and Offerman will reach for the first time. Second walk of the night given up by Hillius. And Offerman is aboard. Runners at first and second, one down. Number 22, the first baseman, Tony Clark. Here comes Rick Peterson, the pitching coach for the A's. Wilson has had Mike McNancy up in the bullpen. And we mentioned Hillius has reached the century mark in terms of his pitch count tonight. And had that shot of Nelson in the dugout uh, sitting in between listening to Johnny Damon and Ricky Henderson talk. All is. <laughs> yeah. And Ricky will talk. And Johnny Damon certainly listened to Ricky Henderson when he arrived in spring training. The two worked together. Uh, that, that's a great sign there. You know, uh, two veteran players, obviously a Hall of Famer. Johnny Damon has been in the league a long time, sitting there talking to the rookie, talking baseball. Tells a little something about what this club's made of this year. A lot of times rookies come up and nobody talks to them. Those days have changed. Tony Clark stands in. Not after the first pitch, fouling it back. That's got to be a pretty lonely place to be when you get to the big leagues and you try to stick. Uh, maybe when you first came up and really you were probably on an island in terms of veterans. Yeah, it was a little bit different, but it's all how you conduct yourself, too. If you come up and you uh, bust your tail, keep your mouth shut, you make friends in a hurry. You come up here acting like you've been here for about 10 years, you lose a lot of friends. Tony Clark quickly in the hole, nothing in two. You see that a lot nowadays. Players come up acting like they've been in the big leagues, uh, you know, or they should have been here like three years ago or something. Come up with the attitude, and uh, that doesn't that doesn't play well. 
He's all in. He's, he's a grin. He's listening. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> Right at Velarde on to second not in time. Trying to double off Shea Hillenbrand. Clark is retired. Two down. And those remain where they are. Hillenbrand just got back. Off from it at first. Two away. Well, these are the kind that Tony Clark would certainly like to have. Right on the button. Hits it hard, but right at Velarde. Hillenbrand gets uh, just back safely to second base. Now, when you hit a ball like that and you've been having your struggles, you need those to drop his hits. Now Jason Veritek, who's 0 for 2 tonight, he's fouled out to third and struck out. <laughs> Offerman at first, Hillenbrand at second. Line foul down beyond Canvas Alley. And Veritek in the hole, nothing in two. The 0 2 pitch. Veritek strikes out. Second time tonight, he's down by way of decay. Hillius with two strikeouts. Red Sox strand a pair. Through six, 4 1 Boston. Fenway, the Red Sox have the 4 1 lead. Well, the 2002 official Red Sox magazine provides fans with features on this year's team, members of the 67 team, nostalgic stories of Fenway Park's 1912 season, a color poster suitable for framing, puzzles, and much more. To receive all six in-season issues, send a check or money order for $25 to Red Sox Magazine, 4 Yorkie Way, Boston, Mass, 02215. That magazine is loaded. I still can't get over the puzzle. It's got it all. We head now to the top of the seventh inning. 4-1, Red Sox on top out, hitting Oakland 6-4. Derek Lowe working into the seventh inning. So far giving up just one run on four hits. Oakland left the bases loaded in the third. And Derek got out of a jam then. But that's really been the only threat. Expect uh, when Oakland scored in the fifth. Four hits given up by Lowe so far. He has struck out four and walked one. Turns long. And is grounded out twice to the left side of the Red Sox infield. Gets out of the way of that pitch, one and one. Red Sox has a pitching staff remained first in ERA. They've given up the fewest hits, fewest runs, fewest home runs, the fewest walks, and they are sixth in the league in strikeouts. Grounded right back in low. Able to snare it, he'll run a little bit and flip in time. Terrence Long out number one of the seventh inning. Let's check in with the Nesson studio and Bob Rogers. Bob? All right, Donnie. Rough night for the Yankees at home against the Devil Rays. That's Steve Cox against Sterling Hitchcock. Cox's second home run of the night, sixth of the year. El Duque lasted just an inning and two-thirds. Gave up eight runs. It's nine to three now in the bottom of the fifth. Thanks, Bob. Here, Red Sox on top, four to one. We're in the top of the seventh inning with one away. Scott Hatterberg go for two. Red Sox doing their business early in this one. Three runs in the first, a run in the second. Hatterberg offered, according to Charlie Relliford, and it's one and one. Derek Lowe about to throw his 90th pitch of the night. And that's in there for the strike, one and two. Derek Lowe, two down in the seventh inning. 
First strikeout tonight in the low on a changeup. All others have been with the fastball. This time it's the changeup. Back to back changeups that time to Scott Hatterberg. Pick up the strikeout. That's a good one there. That had Pedro action on it. Six in a row retired by Derek Lowe. Greg Myers one for two tonight. Had been 0 for 9 in May prior to his base hit in the third inning. Ramon Hernandez does the bulk of the catching for the Oakland A's. Good shot. Pass the mound towards second. Sanchez charging and throwing underhanded in time to get Myers. Another 1 2 3 inning for Derek Lowe. Seventh inning stretch time from Fenway. 4 1 Red Sox. Coming up after extra innings tonight on Nesson. Well, as the Red Sox will be coming to the plate in the bottom of the seventh inning. Eric Hillius, after six innings, departs for Oakland. They bring on a new pitcher, right-hander Jim Messier. 16th appearance of the year for Messier, a record of one and one. All those appearances out of the bullpen. 12 strikeouts in 16 innings, 15 hits allowed. Opponents hitting 234 off Jim Messier. Then in the big leagues with Seattle, the Yankees, Tampa Bay, and now in his third season with Oakland was uh, a paper transaction for the Red Sox some time ago. As the Red Sox had picked him up, he was traded to Boston for Mike Stanley and Randy Brown at one point. That was in 1997, but ended up being taken by the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in the expansion draft from the Red Sox. Never pitched in Boston, of course, but was left unprotected. And Tampa Bay picked him up, and he pitched there for three years with the Devil Rays. And as we talked about out in Oakland, one of the few pitches in the game that throws the screwball. Ray Sanchez, the number nine hitter to lead it off. One for two tonight. Singled back in the second inning. He's now hit safely in 15 of 16 games after having that 14 game hitting streak snapped here last night. Achilles on the hook right now for the Oakland A's. He left after six innings, giving up six hits, four runs, walked two, struck out two, and had a tough first inning, in which the Red Sox scored three times, back-to-back -back home runs for Daubach and Shea Hillenbrand. Huge foul, one and two. Jim Messier is 31 years of age. From Tampa Bay to Oakland, part of a deal for Todd Bielitz and Jesus Palome, who now pitches for Tampa Bay, who was in the Oakland system at the time. And in the dirt, and the count is two and two. Some of the Yankees thought Colome was throwing at them. If you caught some of that action last night. I read about it. It was Jeter, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, that they thought uh, Colome was throwing at. Benches emptied, but nothing. Uh, no shots were taken, I guess. There were a couple guys leading up to Jeter, but finally Jeter had had enough and told Colome was sent down today by Tampa Bay to Durham. So oh, really? Done, yeah. Well, that was Hal McRae probably didn't uh, approve of what Colome was doing in that game. Colome's got a good arm. He does. He throws hard. Two and two to Ray Sanchez. They'll be followed by Ricky Henderson and Johnny Damon. On the ground towards Velarde. One down. That'll take us up to the top of the Red Sox order. And Ricky Henderson, who's one for three tonight with a run driven in. The one part was a double in the second inning for Ricky. Number 35, the left fielder, Ricky Henderson. Well, Jim Messier working from the stretch with no one on. Right hand reliever facing Ricky for the first time tonight. It's amazing how baseball fashion has changed over the years. Uh, players used to wear the uh, pants, you know, way up here, show a lot of the shoe, then it dropped down to about the top of the stirrup. 
now and hangs down over the shoes in some cases. This is a one hopper at Velarde at second base. Yeah, there's two down. The guy that amazes me is Jeff Bagwell. Who wears those big pants. I mean, they look like they're like three or four sizes too big for him. Who was the guy too that uh, Derek Bell? Yeah, is another Number one. Yeah. <laughs> the center fielder, Johnny Demon. You went with the high stirrup look, did you not? For the most part. Um, in the day, I mean, that was the way the Red Sox had to wear them. They had to show similar to this, not quite uh, had different kind of socks, but you had to show red, white, and a blue stripe. And that rule went out the board and uh, pants started to go down, down, down. And now, I mean, you don't even have to wear stirrups. <laughs> you really don't even see stirrups anymore as I look around down there. I don't really see a guy showing me much stirrup anywhere. And as Johnny Damon bats with two outs in the seventh, one for three and slashes a foul. I think it's kind of easier the way it is now. You know, the stirrups, I mean, they're a pain in the neck. Every time you slide, you got to pull them up and then. To tape them mm -hmm. to keep them yeah. up, or just have to tape them, or most guys taped. Oh, there's some uh, yeah. red showing. <laughs> yeah. Grounded foul into the Red Sox dugout, still nothing in two. Well, there's so many memos in the clubhouses in Tampa Bay. They have every memo that's been sent out over the last few years. I don't remember seeing any uniform memos in terms of where the stirrup is supposed to be from a major league standpoint. The last uh, uniform problem I'd hear of was one with Pedro when he was yeah. cutting his sleeves. And uh, that was, you're not supposed to do that. And they finally clamped down on that. Felt that he was altering the uniform. So his sleeves now are just very loose fitting. The one two that just misses to Damon two and two the count. Johnny Damon batting second customarily with Ricky Henderson in the lineup as Ricky is tonight. Here's the opposite way to left center field Giambi's on the run and he's not going to get there. Back by the warning track and Damon will cruise into second base with a two out double. Jambi was uh, kind of playing him toward that left field line when the ball left the bat it looked like it had a chance for somebody to chase down because it was hit high enough but as far over as Jambi was playing he couldn't catch up to it. That ball hit the grass uh, right in front of the warning track. Johnny Damon picks up his fourth double of the season. Number five, the shortstop, Nomar Garcia Parra. Here is Nomar who has put the ball in the air three times. Actually, if you count the foul fly into the Nesson booth four times. Pop out to second base, a foul out to the catcher, and a fly ball to right. Did somebody catch that? Yeah, someone in the Nesson booth got that. <laughs> Just have Nomar sign that for you after the game. <laughs> I gave it away already. Your friend that you had in the booth tonight. He's had a great night. No 1 0. This is inside. 2 0 to Nomar. Ryan Dabach waits on deck. Red Sox trying to add on. To a three run advantage as they bat here in the bottom of the seventh inning. No action in either bullpen as Jim Messier works for Oakland. And that'll miss. Oh, you know, now to Nomar. Myers wanted that, as did Messier. They're going to just put Nomar on with the 3 0 count and start over with Dawbach. Nomar probably would have had the green light if he wanted it there on the 3 0 count. And Messiah tough on lefties uh, with that screwball. Brian Dabak hit a two run home run in the first inning to right field, landed in the Oakland bullpen. Good for his sixth home run of the year.
Three minutes second Garcia par at first both runners reaching with two outs in the inning. Here with the 1-0. Bobak will take that for a strike. Get the hands out of the way and it grabs the corner. One and one. Bobak swings away and grounds it foul. Down near the Red Sox dugout down the first base line, one and two. A couple of quick ground outs for Jim Masir to begin the inning. Sanchez and Henderson both grounding out. Johnny Damon double to left, and then after Masir got behind Garcia Parra, three and oh, gave him the intentional walk. Omar at first, Damon at second, and the one two. Robach leans out of the way. Two and two. See if he goes back outside now with that uh, screwball against Dawbach. Just missed, and it's a full count. The runners will be off with two down. Okay, Hillenbrand waits on deck. He's got two hits tonight a home run and a double. And the Fenway faithful coming to their feet again. This year with the sign brings a 3-2, and that is ball four to load the bases. So after the intentional walk of Nomar, Masir walks Brian Dobbach. All the base runners have come with two outs in the inning. And Shea Hillenbrand makes his way to the plate. Hillenbrand's had a big night. The home run back in the first inning just missed another home run straight away center field in the sixth inning. Shay Hillenbrand with one grand slam in his career. It came this season, the catwalk shot in Tampa Bay. Chopped it left side. Chavez await on the hop. The throw is going to be not in time. And from third comes Johnny Damon, and the Red Sox lead it five to one. Hillenbrand gets down the line and drives in a run. Chavez stayed back on that, I believe, because that runner was going from second to third. He couldn't put a hard charge on the ball. Big high bounce here by Hillenbrand. Now watch Chavez stay back. You see the runner and Garcia Parra just in front of him. And that's all it takes. Hillenbrand hustling all the way down the line will beat it out. I had to make a decision. Do I charge the ball, play it on the in-between hop, wait for the big hop? Hillenbrand safe by about a half a step. Well, Hillenbrand with three hits tonight and two runs batted in. Home run, a double and a single. Triple shy of the cycle as Offerman takes a strike one and one. And Jose, a 278 hitter with the bases loaded. Garcia Parr at third, Dabak at second, Hillenbrand at first, and Masir will back off. Action in the Oakland pen. They've got a left hander up now. And Offerman takes the strike. One and two. That's one of those high strikes. How about let a high. <laughs> Off 
Chapman looking for his first hit of the night. 0 for 2. He did reach in the sixth. And a two walks given up by the Oakland starter, Eric Hillius. The 1 2. Chopped down the first base line. Backing up is Pena. He'll need the pitcher, and Masir is there to retire the side. Well, the Red Sox pick up another run in the bottom of the seventh inning. On to the eighth. 5 1 Boston. Seven Red Sox on top five to one. Let's check in with Tom Karen. Tom. Well, Don, you saw the banner before wishing Eileen luck in her retirement. We have found Eileen. She is our Citizens Bank, not your typical fan. Eileen Kirkbride retiring after 40 years as a teacher, and you didn't want a, a dinner in your honor tonight. No, I said no rubber chicken dinners. Let's go to the ball game and have fun. So we did. Went to the beer works, came out here to see a game. The Yankees are losing. You're happy. Oh, wonderful. Couldn't be better. <laughs> That's Eileen, not your typical fan. And she was very impressed by your catch earlier, Don. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, TC. That's terrific. No rubber chicken dinner for Eileen. Wants to be at Fenway. Carlos Pena to lead it off as we move to the eighth inning. He's one for two, one of four hits for Oakland tonight. There's Derek Lowe, works into the eighth inning. He's now retired seven Oakland A's in a row. He misses with the first one outside. Three times this year, Lowe has gone seven innings, five and a third against Kansas City, who cost the no hitter, seven against Tampa Bay, eight last time against Oakland. This is lined in the center field. Johnny Damon coming on. There's the first out of the eighth inning. You often hear from center fielders the toughest catch to make or the toughest read to get is the ball hit right at you in center. Johnny got a good read and there's one away in the eighth. Has anything gone out toward Jose Hoffman? No. Nothing in his direction Number tonight. Fielder. Nothing. That's amazing. Jeremy Usually when a guy Jeremy. they find you, you know. <laughs> I bet Jose wants one. Well, now that the five-one lead is there, maybe he does. <laughs> a lot of room out there in right field, but he has had no action. Nothing even on the ground out to right field. Nothing has gone to right field. Jeremy Giambi one for two with a walk tonight. And quickly in the hole nothing in two. Lowe has five K's. Jermaine Dye has helped in that area. Dye has struck out three times tonight for the Oakland A's. Ooh, that misses one and two. Didn't miss by very much. Starts it inside to see the tail on the fastball and relative looking right over the right shoulder of Jason Veritek. Low and away, two and two. Eric Lowe about to hit the 100 pitch plateau at 99 right now. This is a way full count. Eric Law working into the eighth inning in his first appearance at Fenway Park since the no hitter here at Fenway. Out after his sixth victory of the year at five and one. And a walk to Giambi with one away here in the eighth. That is only the second walk tonight given up by Lowe, and ironically, both times it has been Jeremy Giambi. Number eight. Frustrating too. He thought he had him on a couple of pitches. Uh, that 0-2 fastball inside corner, and that last uh, backdoor curveball was very close. Looks like action now in the Red Sox bullpen. Looks like uh, El Guapo starting to throw. And Oakland still has left-handed action in their pen. The strike to Randy Velarde. There's Rich Garces up in the bullpen. Garces since May the 7th. It's been a long time for Rich. Now back and below us. Nothing in two. Which has not pitched since the Red Sox were in Oakland. 
been a while for Urbina, who had the chance to come on last night in a non-save situation. He did finish out the ball game last night for the Red Sox. 0-2, oh, opposite way. This will go towards Jose Offerman, a base hit. Up to second base goes Giambi. So with one out, a walk, and now a base hit. The A's with two on and one away. There was a shot at Derek Lowe after that pitch, but he was kicking the dirt on the mound after making the mistake on the 0-2 count. One of the few mistakes he's made tonight. Tony Cloninger on his way out to the mound. First time Tony has been out there tonight. Garce is warming in the bullpen. Eric Lowe has just gone up over the 100 pitch mark in his outing tonight. And so far has surrendered just the one run. Eric Lowe walking off the back of the mound and Cloning is still on top of the mound. I think he thought Tony was going to leave. I don't think he's trying to show him up. I think, I think two things. Derek upset about the guy that he walked, he thought that he had the strikeouts there on uh, Giambi. Also upset with himself for giving up that 0-2 base hit. Eric Chavez. So perhaps a little bit of frustration showed right there from Derek Lowe. With himself. Here's Eric Chavez. Always dangerous. 0 for 3 tonight, however. Lines in and a hop off the glove of Nomar into left center field. This will score Jeremy Giambi with the second Oakland run. And the A's back within three. It's now five to two. Or Chavez with an RBI single. It's one of those plays, if you come up with it, it's a great play. If you don't, it's probably going to be a base hit. Number 24, the right field. Bounce right in front of Jermaine Garcia Parra. Sinking line drive. This is grounded left side off the bat of Die. Hillenbrand is second for one. On to first, they turn the double play. Five, four, three around the horn. Inning ending double play. Oakland gets a run back in the eighth. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Five, two, Boston. Eighth inning, the Red Sox with a three run advantage. They did the bulk of their work back in the first inning with a runner on Brian Dobbach taking it to the Oakland bullpen. Brian's sixth home run of the year put the Red Sox on top 2 0. The very next hitter would be Shea Hillenbrand. Up into the screen and left. First time in 2002, the Red Sox have gone back to back. In the early 3 0 lead, they'd had a run in the second and the most recent run in the bottom of the seventh. Eric Lowe, 16 ground ball outs over the first eight innings, giving up just the two runs. Eric Hillius, six innings, four runs, six hits, walked two, struck out two, and is on the hook tonight for the A's. As we head to the bottom of the eighth, Tony, Tony Clark, Jason Veritek, and Ray Sanchez to face the new pitcher, Mike Magnanti. Left-hander into the ball game for the 16th time this season. The record of 0-1. All those appearances out of the bullpen. Four strikeouts in 10 and two-thirds. Three walks. Opponents hitting 326. Red Sox uh, had a look at Magnanti last week in Oakland. Magnanti, a veteran, 36 years old from Burbank, California. He's been in the big leagues with the Royals the most. He was there from 91 through 96. Two years in Houston, a year in Anaheim, and now his third season in Oakland. We highlighted last week uh, out at the Coliseum. You see two leg braces, two knee braces as he pitches, both knees. This is pretty bulky. I'm sure they're not. But yeah, they're very light, lightweight. Sort of give the appearance. You see a lot of linemen, offensive linemen in football wear those. Yeah. Clark looking for his first hit of the night. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run. It's only with an opportunity to bat from the right side against the left-hander. Clark has certainly had a much better time of it. Batting from the right side at 286. 
from the left at 176. Now the one two reaches out fouls it off the right side. Well, the Red Sox with one game left here against the Oakland A's in this three game series. Where the Mariners come to town. And tomorrow night in the finale, Frank Castillo up against Barry Zito, the lefty going for the A's. And then the Red Sox will host the Seattle Mariners over the weekend. And I believe on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's when the appeal is being heard uh, for Frank Castillo on the Tampa Bay incident. In the air, struck pretty well to right center field, headed for the triangle. That is back, and that is going to be in the triangle. Terrence Long will run it down. Tony Clark still running. He's thinking three, and he will get there with ease. Tony Clark tripling to the triangle to right center field. Stands at third to begin the bottom of the eighth. Oh, did you watch Big T going from first to third? <laughs> yes, I did. They say the triple's the most exciting play in baseball, and I don't think Tony's had many of these in his major league career. All the way to the triangle, hits right up to the garage door, and a little bobble out there. Now watch T, watch him go. I got three. Legs get a little heavy between second and third. <laughs> Let's see. He had three one year in Detroit. In fact, he had three last year. That big uh, Tiger State, uh, not yeah. Tiger, uh, Comerica Park. Yeah. Well, it's not happened often for Tony over the course of his career, but he's got one here tonight to lead off the bottom of the eighth. Here's Veritek for the first time from the right side. Jason, 0 for 3 tonight, he has struck out twice. Harris is still standing in the Boston pen. Watching the action from out there. Oakland's pen is quiet. And Veritek down, nothing in two. Infield not all the way in for Rod Howe, but uh, in far enough that should hold Clark at third base. Nobody out. Very unlikely they would be sending Tony on contact. Plus, he's got to get his oxygen back. After the triple. <laughs> one away, one and two now to Veritek. Well, we'll be back with you in terms of Nesson on Monday as the White Sox will be arriving in town to begin a three game series. This is inside, and the count is two and two. You get some time off, huh? Yeah, a weekend time off. You guys, Fox 25 with uh, what the next four in a row. The 2-2. Two -two. Veritek on a broken bat grounds it right side. Clark will stay at third. Millardi throws out Veritek for the first out of the eighth. That's what we're talking about there. They didn't have to play way in because clock was not going to go on a ground ball to the infield with nobody out. Now with one out, they'll come in a little bit closer. Number 13, the second baseman. Because there's more of a chance of him going, although I doubt even with one out they would send Tony on a ground ball on contact. Here's Ray Sanchez, one for three tonight. Red Sox out hitting Oakland nine to six on top five two as they bat in the bottom of the eighth. Clark stands at third with one away. One and one now to Sanchez. 
Jay Sanchez from Puerto Rico. Fire coming to the Red Sox. Any time with the Cubs. Brief time with the Yankees, the Giants, Kansas City. In Atlanta, of course, a very brief stay. Watch Sanchez now. He'll look down from a sign from Cubbage with that man on third. Cubbage will give him the sign, and then he'll go over to talk to Clark and let him know if there's a squeeze play on or not. Two and one to Ray Sanchez. Three and one now to Ray. On deck, the top of the Red Sox order, Ricky Henderson. Ricky doubled back in the second and drove in a run. Now the 3 1 from Magnanti in the air to left center field. Giambi is headed back. So is Long, and that's going to fall and one hop the wall. Clark will easily jog home. Sanchez thinking three. He will get there. The second triple of the inning for the Red Sox. Clark's leadoff triple. And then Ray Sanchez with a triple to left center field. And this one brings in a run. The Red Sox lead it six to two. Very unusual to see two triples in the same inning. This ball did not even hit the wall. You see uh, Terrence Long back off. It's like he's going to play the carom, but it hits right on the warning track. So misjudged out there in center field, and Sanchez turns it on here as he rounds second base for the second triple of the inning. Ray also drives in his 16th run of the year. His last triple a season ago in September. Now Ricky Henderson with a chance to drive in another run. I think, uh, I think Tony's getting a little bit in yeah. that dugout like, like maybe Sanchez got there a little quicker than he did. <laughs> it was uh, far less winded in the process. <laughs> Show those wheels. <laughs> This is inside. Ricky ahead, two and zero. Oh. Madison's double in the second, drove in the fourth Boston run. In there for the strike that time. Now two and one to Ricky. He'll take a little walk. Nancy has given up two triples in the same inning. One to Tony Clark, one to Ray Sanchez. A ground out by Veritek mixed in between. A 2-1. In the air to left, down the line, bending towards the corner, and that will be a foul ball. Started fair, but just kept breaking away. And gets all oh, a road deep down there into the box seats of Jet Out. Acton Boxborough Baseball, Blue County League. Great baseball. That near your neck of the woods? Down in that area? Two and two to Ricky Henderson. Ronnie Damon waits on deck. Henderson lines it to left. That'll get down for a base hit. Roll towards the corner. In from third comes Ray Sanchez with the seventh Boston run. Ricky's driven in another. to go by Babe Ruth for 32nd place on the all-time list. He's got the two tonight. That time it looked like a changeup right down that left field line. Ricky with two RBI. Eight total on the season. And that's going to bring out, bring out Rick Peterson, the pitching coach. The 
And Oakland has action that is just starting now to throw. And they have a left-hander up in the bullpen. Is that Mike Holtz? Yes. Well, the Red Sox could hit for the cycle in this inning. They've got the, the triple. They got the double. They need a single and a home run. Tony Clark and Ray Sanchez with triples. Ricky Henderson with a double. And Johnny Damon will be next. Rick Peterson has concluded his conversation. The pitching coach for the A's. Red Sox trying to grab their 27th victory of the year. This will make them 27 and 9 and also 5 and 0 oh against the Oakland A's this season after sweeping them at Oakland. Red Sox with an opportunity to take the first two here in this series at Fenway Park. Johnny Damon has two hits and four tries tonight. Single and a double as he takes ball one. Eric Hillius, the starter tonight for Oakland, on the hook. His six innings. The Red Sox were able to produce four runs. Jim Messier worked an inning, giving up a run, and Mike Magnanti has been touched for two so far. Still only one out. And it misses Damon inside, two and zero. Oh. Oakland would drop to 18 and 21. Against the AL East, three and eleven for the Oakland A's if they do not come back in this game. Two and one now to Damon. Veritex ground out, still the only out here in the bottom of the eighth. Ricky Henderson stands at second. Now the 2 1. Ricky Bluff didn't leave, and it's 3 and 1 to Damon. What do you think Ricky's talking to out there? Miguel Tejada? Yep, Tejada. And the strike now to Damon. And a three and two count. Omar Garcia Parra on deck. Still just one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Line foul. And by where they hold the tarp down the right field line. Full count. Doing some dancing doesn't go as Damon fouls it off at the plate. He's been bluffing over at second base, grabbing the attention of Mike McNanty. A brief conversation with the bound. Greg Myers out to talk to McNanty. Mike Holt still warming in the Oakland bullpen. Left hander has been up since the Oakland pitching coach was out last. Boston Penn is busy as well. Rich Garces has kind of had to wait out there in the pen as this inning has continued offensively for the Red Sox. Well, they had Garces up first, then Urbina got up when it was a 5 to 2 game. Now that the Red Sox have added runs, Garces back up again. Damon will take the walk. First walk given up by Mike Magnanti. And the Red Sox have two on with one away. And that's going to do it for Magnanti. So Art Howe headed to the mound. Oakland will be using their fourth pitcher of the night. As Howe will go to get the lefty. 
two triples, a double, a walk, and a ground out. So Magnancy working just a third of an inning. He will leave, and Mike Holtz, the left-hander, will be coming on. Still in the bottom of the eighth, 7-2, Red Sox. It up to a 7 to 2 lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. We remind you this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Boston Red Sox may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Boston Red Sox. Mike Magnancy leaving after a third of an inning so far, charged with two runs on three hits, still responsible for Damon and Henderson, who are on with just one out in the inning. And he gives way to the fourth Oakland pitcher of the night, left-hander Mike Holtz. Fourteenth appearance for Holtz. He's worked on a total of ten and a third innings, allowing 17 hits and eight earned runs. Opponent sitting 347. The last time he worked was against the Red Sox back uh, at the Coliseum on the eighth, an inning and two-thirds in that game. Red Sox got a couple of runs off him. Number five, the nine-year-old left-hander. This is home in Arlington, Virginia. The only organization he had been with prior to coming here to Oakland was the Anaheim Angels. Been in Anaheim since 1996. Well, here is Nomar, still looking for his first hit of the night. Garcia Parra 0 for 3 with an intentional walk tonight. The 0 for 3 part, three flyouts for Nomar tonight. Red Sox on top, 7 to 2, still batting in the bottom of the eighth with one out. In the air again to right, Jermaine Dye back a few steps. Two down, and the runners remain at first and second, and Damon at first, Henderson at second, with now two outs. Number 23, the designated hitter, Brian Dogmark. Here comes Brian Daubach. We had a two-run home run into the bullpen. The Oakland pen in the first inning. His sixth home run of the year since then has flied out twice and walked. Daubach again producing from the number four spot in the Red Sox order. In the absence of Manny Ramirez. But there have been other contributions along the way as well. Ricky Henderson for the second straight night has two hits and two runs batted in. The guys who had to shuffle in terms of playing time, Dabach and Henderson, both contributing last night and tonight. Dabach, the DH tonight, and Offerman playing out in right field defensively tonight for the Red Sox. Ricky with a pair of doubles in the game tonight, one in the second and one here in the eighth. Had the 2 0 count, swung through it 2 and 1. Anderson at second, Damon at first, 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1 now to Daba. Mentioned the final game of the series tomorrow night after Oakland is finished here in Boston. They'll head north of the border, take on the Toronto Blue Jays for three over the weekend while the Mariners are here at Fenway. Three and one to Brian Dabog. And a full count and with a big cut. The runners at first and second, the responsibility of Mike Magnanti. Oakland has come back with back to back lefties out of the pen. Will be off with two outs and a full count to Daubach. 
Colts backs off again. Goes through the signs with Greg Myers, the catcher. Now the 3 2 pitch. Dalbach gets a piece, fouling it off. Sox with seven runs on 11 hits and no errors. The A's two runs, six hits, and an error. Boston vying for the 27th win of the year with nine losses. Best winning percentage in the major leagues. Those will be off again with two outs here. Full count to Daubach. Holtz reaches in and brings a 3-2, and that is ball four. Robach will make his way down to first base, and the bases are loaded. Rembrandt batted with the bases loaded in the seventh inning and beat out an infield hit that scored Johnny Damon with the fifth Boston run. So here he is again with the bases loaded, this time in the bottom of the eighth. Starting off ahead is Mike Holtz. Popped in over the inside corner. Oakland, as we look ahead to the top of the ninth, expecting Miguel Tejada, Terrence Long, and Scott Hatterberg. And at the very least, they'll be dealing with a five-run deficit down seven to two. Millenbrand <laughs> gets a piece, finds himself in the hole, nothing in two. In a third, Damon at second, Daubach at first, two down. Little Brand rolls it down the third baseline. Holtz has got to hurry up, had trouble getting it out, and Hillenbrand beats it out. Henderson in from third, and the Red Sox lead it eight to two. Well, when you hop, you hop. That ball looked like it was going to go foul, and the last bounce kicked it back to fair territory. Holtz was forced to make a play, and Hillenbrand again hustling, has another infield hit. Watch this ball change direction down that third baseline. It looked like it was going to be going foul. And then it kicks back into fair territory. He has to make a play on it, and Shea hustling down that line will pick up another RBI. He's had two dandies in the last couple of innings, hasn't he? Certainly has. <laughs> Infield hits, driving in the runs. Three RBI tonight, 31. Actually, 32 now total on the season. Offerman lifts this in the air to center. Long backed up and now comes on to make the catch. Red Sox sent nine men to the plate in the eighth inning, and they are able to put across three more. Four hits tonight for Shea Hillenbrand. Red Sox on top, 8-2. It's bringing people together with low fares. And by Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. Through eight, Red Sox on top, eight to two. Derek Lowe done after eight innings, six hits, gave up two runs, walked two, and struck out five. He'll give way to Rich Garces. Garces making only his 11th appearance of the season. He's worked uh, nine innings so far, allowing 10 hits and 10 earned runs, a couple of walks and six strikeouts. It's been a long time for Rich. His last outing was against the Athletics on the seventh back on that road trip. Pitched an inning against Oakland, giving up two earned runs. Sahada, Long, and Hatterberg featured here in the top of the ninth. Grounded out twice and struck out. Garces missing with the first one. Rich has waited a while to get into this game. 
and waited a while in between appearances Jerry mentioned. And it's now two and oh. So Derek Lowe working the first eight innings tonight making a bid for his sixth victory it would make Derek six and one. Popped up. Foul ground. Veritek heading over towards the seats and will make the catch. Had to deal with the short fencing and the fans, but Veritek ranges over and makes the catch for the first out in the ninth. And I credit the fans for not reaching over and interfering with the Veritek on that play. Trying to pick up a souvenir. Look at Veritek. Check out how much room he's got. And then reaches up and makes the play. So one down and it brings up Terrence Long who has grounded out three times tonight. Look at his center fielder. Scott Hatterberg waits on deck as Oakland bats here in the ninth. They are trailing by six runs. Red Sox with more hits, a two to one ratio in that category. Boston on top, 12 to six. And this is golf foul off the left side, one and two. And again, the finale of this three game series tomorrow night. Oakland will be looking to salvage one game from the Red Sox. Art Howell send Barry Zito, the left-hander, to the mound tomorrow night against Frank Castillo going for the Red Sox. One, two in the air down the left field line, curving towards foul ground and back into the seats. The A's, who are eight games back now of the Seattle Mariners, top the AL West, will fall to 18 and 21. And now that would mark their third loss in a row if Garces and the Red Sox can finish things off here in the ninth on top by six. Hit and through. Out of the outstretched reach of Tony Clark at first into right field. And Terrence Long aboard with one out in the ninth. Only the seventh hit of the night for the Oakland Athletics. Number 10. The nice diving hitter. effort by Tony Clark, but not quite enough. And fielded quality, I might add, out there in the outfield again by Jose Offerman. And Offerman has had to handle some base hits that have come in his direction on the ground, but he has yet to be tested in the air in his first appearance in right field. Here's Scott Hatterberg, who's 0 for 3 tonight. Two ground outs and a strikeout. Hatterberg ahead now, two and oh. Hatterberg had a couple of hits last night going two for four, looking for his first hit of tonight. Line snared by Sanchez. He'll turn it, fire, and it's in time. Ball game over on the double play that ends things in the ninth. Line drive to Sanchez. They're able to get long at first, and he's doubled off, and the Red Sox have taken two of the first three against the Oakland A's. Tonight, a final of eight to two, and Derek Lowe will pick up his sixth victory for the Red Sox this season, six and one, and Ricky Henderson continues to get it done. A couple of doubles tonight, a couple of runs batted in. Contributing from the top spot in the Red Sox order. A great beginning tonight for Boston back in the first inning with the back-to-back -back home runs from Daubach and Hillenbrand. They get off on the right foot and they come back with a run in the seventh, three in the eighth, and able to beat the Oakland A's tonight, a final of eight to two. The Red Sox better their record to 27 and nine with the win. Oakland drops to 18 and 21. Low the winner, Hillius the loser. Be sure and stay with us for extra innings coming up next on Nesson. that you would like to see. Fly Southwest Airlines, because friends fly free. For romance. Give it a chance. Fly so you can dance. Fly so you can cry. Fly, because it's America. From free to shiny. 
And if you fly Southwest Airlines, your friend flies free. Announcing Friends Fly Free from Southwest Airlines. Simply purchase a special discounted fare starting at $59, and a friend comes along for free. You are now free to move about the country. People of legal drinking age should enjoy alcohol responsibly, but don't drink if you're under 21. done with the number one selling truck 25 straight years ford f-150 available now with 2500 cash back or zero nine financing or how about ford super duty it's got the most conventional towing capacity of any full-size pickup and comes with a thousand cash back or zero nine financing ford f-series and super duty only at your new england ford dealer ford Ask about it at work. It was the special spot my dad used to take me, just to talk, spend time together. As for catching a great meal, luckily, he knew of a good spot for that too. Friendlies. Your favorite spot now has something new. Three new Colossal Burger Baskets, the new Frunion Ranch, or the new Ultimate Bacon Cheeseburger. And now try any Friendly's Colossal Burger Basket and get a hot fudge sundae free. You know all the good spots, Dad. You and me and Friendly's. The new Verizon.com is here. Review bills. Pay bills. Live life. Verizon. The new Verizon.com is here. Review bills, pay bills, ditch the paper. Verizon. What's wrong, Jim? I think I've grown a second evil head. Hey, I'm sorry. What if we go get a refreshing Mike's hard iced tea? Would that help? I didn't know Mike's made a hard iced tea. <laughs> you bet they do. <laughs> A hard day calls for a hard iced tea. <coughs> Make it Mike's. Jeep vehicles are known for capability, and now during the Jeep Challenge, we rule on a whole new level, starting with our seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge on engines and transmissions. Plus now, qualified returning Daimler Chrysler lessees can get a $2.98 a month lease on Jeep Liberty. So take the Jeep Challenge. You will see we're hard to beat. Hey, you guys got to give me a head start next time. Great products, great protection, great values. Take the Jeep Challenge. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. The report card is out, and it's all A's for the Red Sox again. A tale of two first-inning tall jacks to taste this blistering offense, and a tall D low on the hill. And you know what? That's all you need. Live from our Nesson Studios, Extra Innings. Extra Innings is brought to you by T-SPAN, putting more energy into life. And once again, the Red Sox have the energy at Fenway Park. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. As our Red Sox coverage continues, I'm Bob Rogers. He is Jim Corsi, and the Red Sox get it done again. As the Red Sox just dominating the Oakland Athletics, it starts with the pitching. Derek Lowe on the hill did it again tonight. But our key span player of the game, it is Shea Hillenbrand. Shea getting it done. I'll tell you what, four for five. Hit the ball a long way a few times. His last one barely went 40 feet, but he'll take it. Four for five, the double, the home run. His average up to 338. It's his first four-hit game this season, his second of his career. So it is 
Shea Hillenbrand, our Keyspan player of the game. And please join Keyspan and Shea in supporting the Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston. Keyspan, putting more energy into life. Now Shea Hillenbrand down on the field with Tom Karen. Here we are here with Shea Hillenbrand, a home run in the first, just missed in the second, and then a couple RBI singles that maybe traveled about 60 feet. Uh, they all count, don't they? For, for sure, you know. I think I ran out a little juice after those first two balls I hit, but uh, you never know in this game. you got to take what's given to you, uh, every opportunity, and, uh, you know, work very hard and uh, just, just do what you got to do to, to help this team win. Back-to-back, two-out home runs for you and Brian Daubach in the first inning. Happened a lot this year. How important some of these games to get out to that quick lead and set the tone? Huge, huge. And, uh, it's, it's nice to see that uh, Derek Lowe can just settle down and work, do, do his game. But uh, it's, it's tough right now without Manny out. Uh, our spirits are down a little bit, but we're just going to keep going. And everybody, every one of us is going to pick it up a little bit and just take a day at a time and keep working hard because this is the team that could do it. Daubach, uh, Tony Clark showing signs now. They're starting to come together real well. You talk about Manny being gone. A lot of guys got to pick it up. So far for three games, they have. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, we're playing great baseball right now. We got a lot of tough teams coming ahead of us in the next couple, two, three series. Uh, just got to stay cons consistent and keep uh, each game going one by one. By one. Talk about Derek Lowe real quickly. You talked about it. He can go out there with a the lead. He works so quickly. As an infielder, you got to love the speed and the pace of which he works. Yeah, he's working great this year. He's got a lot of confidence top of his game right now. Uh, just staying real consistent, uh, having a great time. Four hits, three RBI. Shea, thanks for joining us. Thank you. That's Shea Hillary, and he is our key span player of the game. Just edging out Don Orsillo with the spectacular catch early. Let's go up to Don and Jerry in the booth for more. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Well, the Red Sox have now played Oakland five times, and they've won all five games against the West Coast foe. Another good victory tonight, and uh, Derek Lowe with a very nice outing. Unbelievable. You know, when you talk about Derek Lowe, six wins now in the season. He probably, I'm sure he leads the American League right now in ERA, lowest batting average against, and it continued here tonight. Now, he's faced the Oakland Athletics in back-to-back -back games, and they're a good ball club. I mean, they've got some guys that can hit on his team and hit some home runs, but he's been able to put them down with the ground ball out, so it's been out absolutely outstanding what he's done. To me, the highlight of the game tonight, obviously, was the Tony Clark triple, watching yeah. him run out the triple, <laughs> and your terrific catch Thank here you. in the booth. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that. You're, nice. well, you're welcome. Yeah. Nice game tonight for the Red Sox. They have picked up their second out of three against Oakland. They'll go after the series sweep tomorrow night. That does it for us up here. Now back to the guys down in the studio. Bob? All right, guys. Thanks a lot. And yes, a terrific win for the Red Sox tonight. And you make the point, obviously, the offense coming through again tonight, but it all starts with the pitching. It does. It starts with pitching. If you look at the last three starts since Manny's been gone, you know, they have six quality innings, six quality innings, and then eight out of D low tonight. And that sets the tone for the team. You know, it's chase, it's tough uh, chasing a crooked number. That's a good point. I heard somebody wise say that <laughs> at one particular time. I'll tell you what, the key to this pitching staff, it seems like they come up with the important pitch when they need it. And tonight, Derek Lowe facing the bases loaded situation, and he gets the ground ball out to get out of the trouble and uh, you know again you make the quality pitch at the key time and that's a difference in the ball game Derek Lowe avoiding a big inning for Oakland and that is a difference Grady Little still all smiles let's go down your first live and exclusive look with the Red Sox manager I've been real productive everybody knows how the team reacts when Pedro takes the mound and when Derek Lowe takes the mound we're, we're starting to get that same feeling and it's not that bad Can you comment on the final play of the game today? Well, the final play of the game, it, uh, Ray Sanchez made a great play to get up. You know, the, that little fella can't get up too high, but he got up high enough to catch that one and he got rid of the ball quick enough to get the double play at first base. And that, we're playing good baseball, and, and when you play good baseball, things will happen good for you. Grady, does anything surprise you about what your team is doing? I mean, you, you're minus two starting outfielders. You guys just keep rolling along. You never miss a beat. People are inserted into the lineup. Keep getting hits. I mean, Jose Hoffman's in right field. Doesn't get a ball hit to him at all tonight. You know, it, it just seems to me that no matter what buttons you push, they all continue to work for you. Question is, you surprised at what your ball club has done? <laughs> Kevin, now you know he said a lot more than that. If, he's, if he was saying that in Spanish, that's good. <laughs> we're, we're not surprised because we knew coming in we had, we had a lot of depth on this club, much more depth than the uh, Boston Red Sox club has had in the past few years. And, and uh, when you have this kind of depth, you've got players that, that are coming in the game that, are, that can be productive, and, and they are productive, and that's just the way it's been. It's not, it's not a big surprise for us. Thank you. 
Did you expect Lowe to be such an innings eater this early? Personally, I did. I, I knew that he would be a short pitch kind of pitcher. No, he wouldn't use a whole lot of pitches to get the job done and, and just because of his ability to get ground balls. And we're, he's doing just exactly that. So what, what, uh, what we'll do with him being at this is his first year to start and, and going into deeper into the season, we will start to monitor him a little bit in, in his innings pitch to uh, make sure he, he remains healthy for the entire season. Hillenbrand? Jay Hillenbrand, he's talking to me now after this game tonight. He's talking to me about putting, uh, letting him have the green light just as we do with Damon and uh, some of the other runners after beating out those two infield hits there with the bases loaded. He, he's talking about getting the green light now, but we'll have to talk about that a little further. Any other questions? The first thing you know, Tony Clark wants the green light, too, after hitting that triple. <laughs> we can't get carried away too much. How, how about Ricky? You talked about him yesterday, but again, two for five in place of Manny. I mean, do you just have complete confidence that he can get the job done? Can you yeah, talk about Ricky, please? Uh, Ricky Henderson, he's, uh, he's a confident young man himself, and he, he instills this confidence in everyone else. When he, when he gets into a ball game, things are going to happen, and, and it's because he's making them happen. We're glad he's getting a, getting an opportunity to do this for for a period of time now. With the, while Manny's going to be out, and uh, we have no doubt in our minds that he'll be very productive. Yes, that was live and exclusive with Red Sox manager Grady Little. This is all this team does is win. And you mentioned the pitching, and we're going to have last night's winning pitcher John Burkett in studio with us next. So get on the phone lines right now. One eight six six. Ask Nesson, John Burkett, joining us next on Extra Innings. IntelliJoy's named the Honda Accord sedan the best overall value of 2002. It's where the smart money is. Now lease a 2002 Accord LX for $239 a month for 36 months. The bench on the right is being painted with Krylon. The bench on the left with Rust-Oleum. After just 12 minutes, Krylon is dry to the touch. Rust-Oleum, well, um, gee. Oh, not good. Oh, oh boy. For a smooth, professional finish, Fast-drying Krylon performs like no other. Krylon. No runs, no drips, no errors. Hey, surfing? Investing. Transferring money from my fleet checking account into my Quick and Riley account. Wait, you can do that? You don't even have to have, like, a Section 3 or a Series 85 or something nope. like those? No, nope. everything's right here. Yeah, mutual funds, bonds. Even a personal financial consultant you can call. Yeah, your total financial picture all in one place. With just a click. My financial picture probably be like one of them elementary school photos, you know, the small version. You just came in from recess, you're all sweaty, your hair's sticking up in the back, but your mom still says it looks good. Socks.com. Welcome back to Extra Innings, everybody. Bob Rogers alongside Jim Corsi. John Burke is going to join us in just a little bit, but let's show you how the Red Sox beat the Oakland Athletics again. They have their number, and right now it seems like the Red Sox have everybody's number. Early, watch this. No more Garcia Parra. Pop up, back to the booth, and would you believe Don Arcillo? It's nice to see a play-by-play -play guy with a little ability, you know, working for Nesson. What do you think, Bob? That's because I'm in the studio there, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom of the first inning, Johnny Damon back to the mound. Eric Hillius, this should get him out. Oh, boy. Throws it away. Well, that's painful. That would come back to haunt him, too, because the Red Sox would make the Athletics pay with two outs. It's Brian Dawbach up, out, and gone. Tall Jack. 
His sixth of the season, it's two zip. And the next batter up, it's Shea Hillenbrand. This pitch screaming, crush me, and oh boy, that's what he does. Up, out, and gone. High into the night, his eighth of the season, it's three nothing. Hillius has to be kicking himself. This is the most sour feeling you can have in baseball, is you know you messed up on a, a defensive play, and it cost your team. One of those routine plays. And you know what, when Derek Lowe is pitching, you have a feeling that three runs would be enough. Jermaine Dye down on strikes, and then Miguel Tejada. That's a pretty good lineup again. Low just mowing them down. It's what he's done all season. Bottom of the second, the Red Sox leading 3 0. Tony Clark on second. Ricky Henderson to right field. This ball has some pop. It will take one bounce into the seats. It's a ground rule double. Ricky is all smiles because the Red Sox have the 4 0 lead. Top of the fifth inning, some defense behind D. Low. The pitchers love this. No more Garcia Parr ranging. Very far turn, spins and throws that sweetness. It's nice to pitch with this behind you. You know, this is great range by Nomar. You know, he does it all day long. You got Garcia Parra at short. You have Sanchez at second. Jimmy, you should pitch again. <laughs> Tom Ball <laughs> pitcher likes this. Top of the fifth inning, Jeremy Giambi will send one off the wall. Pena will score all the way from first base. The kid from Northeastern has the wheels. Doesn't slide, though. Got to get down on that. So it's 4-1. Red Sox will add to their lead in the bottom of the seventh. The base is loaded for Shea Hillenbrand. Sends one to third base. Hillenbrand motoring down the line. Brady Little talking about Shea bragging about his wheels. Well, he got it done. Talk about wheels, Jimmy. Here we go. Tony Clark into the triangle in center. That's triple country for most guys. But how about the big slugger? Can he I make it? I don't want to Forrest Gump him, but run, Tony, run! And he's going <laughs> to he's gonna huff and puff and chug his way into third base. He has a triple. How many times do you see this? Two triples and one inning. Ray Sanchez. Boy, he's done everything for the Red Sox. Again, that one just short hop on the wall. And uh, that's two triples and one inning. And the Red Sox beating the Athletics tonight. Eight to two is the final score. And again, you go up and down that lineup. Jim, I always look at the bottom of the lineup to see the kind of production you get. And you have somebody like Sanchez that gets a couple of hits, an RBI, a run scored. Because the guys at the top are usually going to get it done, but it's the balance in this lineup. What happens when the guys at the bottom of the order start getting hits and it revolves the lineup again, so these guys get an extra at bat, you know, so you get your boppers up there again. And Shea Hillenbrand, he's becoming a bopper. Four hits tonight, four for five, th uh, three RBI. And uh, again, that makes it a little bit easier to pitch, but I think if Derek Lowe only had a uh, few runs to work with tonight, again, he'd get the win. He improves to six and one, two earned runs over. Uh, those eight innings, six hits, five strikeouts. Then Rich Garces comes in. Nice to see Garces uh, have an opportunity to work tonight. It is. He hasn't pitched in a while. Uh, I, he I heard through the grapevine that he was feeling a little tender, but I guess he's fine right now. Now, uh, we keep uh, complimenting this Red Sox pitching staff. We can do it uh, to their face now. I'll tell you what, John Burkett joining us here in studio. Great to have you with us, but it's great to have you wearing that hat because... Uh, yeah, it is. I'm having a lot of fun here. It's been, it's been great. <laughs> you know, what has been the uh, change in your pitching? You know, you were with Tampa Bay. You know, you get released by the Devil Rays, right. and now you're back, a 4-0 start. What's happened? Is it pitching with Greg Maddox? That's what a lot of people talk about. Uh, I think that was part of it, but the other thing I think that was happening is I was going through a transition period where my velocity went down. I needed to add a couple, you know, different looks to the hitter, and I ended up added uh, my curveball, and I tightened up my cutter a little bit. I used to turn my cutter a little bit more, and it would cause me to make uh, mistakes with it. And now I've tightened it up quite a bit, and... Here I am. You know, it's, it's, it's all come together here the last year and a half or so. What about that experience pitching in Atlanta? I would think working with Tommy Glavin and Greg Maddox, and you know, you've been around the game a long time. You've certainly had your share of success. I would think that all of you guys in the dugout talking about pitching, it has to help. Oh, it definitely does. I, I think the fact of just watching them every day, every fifth day, getting to watch guys like that pitch every fifth day, you can't help but take something from their game. And I definitely did that. I mean, I learned from Tom Glavin, I learned not to give in to the hitter. You know, you saw that last night a lot. Uh, I was in trouble a lot. I was even getting behind an account with, with guys on base, and I refused to give in. And I saw that a lot from Glav, you know, and I used to give in a lot. And, uh, and then with Maddox, you know, he forces the action a little bit more. And that's, that's the way I tend to want to pitch. I want to force the action, but then I have times where I'm able to not give in, like I said, and, and uh, throw my pitches even if I'm in trouble. What happens when you, when, when you lose your fastball a little bit, when you're an aggressive pitcher and you want to go after somebody, you know, you're your fastball's up a little so you can make a little more mistake or you can beat a guy but when you lose your fastball a little bit and you got to reinvent yourself a little, just a tiny bit right you know that's that's the difference right and what i started doing is i started throwing more breaking balls thinking that I, my fastball wasn't good enough so i started throwing a lot of breaking balls and i was getting behind the count well when i got to atlanta leo mazzoni 
didn't like my slider at all. And he, <laughs> he let me know about it. He said, your slider stinks. He said, when you think about throwing a slider, 2-0-3-1, he said, just throw a fastball down and away. Take your chances, because he liked my control. And so I started doing that, and, and I was establishing my fastball a little more, and added those two pitches, and it, it helped a lot. You were with Leo Mazzoni. Did you learn how to do this in the dugout? <laughs> no. Are you waiting to I get do tend to do that a little bit. I get right. nervous sometimes. We'll, we'll, continue to talk with, we'll continue to talk with John Burke and take your telephone calls for the Red Sox starter. It has been a good start for the Red Sox. You know, check that. It's been a great start for the Red Sox. As they do it again tonight, beating up on the Oakland Athletics, 8-2. to two. Stick with us. The redefined 2002 Volvo S80. Can a drive be the most relaxing part of your day? Yoga, huh? Decide for yourself at your Volvo retailer. You ever gonna get your washer fixed? Well, we wouldn't be able to see you every Saturday. Oh, well, that's the last note. See you next Saturday, son. All washers and dryers on sale. And get 0% until May 2003, plus free delivery. Only at Sears. Where else? summer. The same dependable people you rely on for all your heating needs also install, replace, and service central home air conditioning. Well, that about wraps it up. Any questions? You've been awfully quiet, Bob. Bob? Thirsty for a cold drink? Try the one-of-a-kind taste of Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. Bob? The secret's out. Stop by for a delicious new scone in raspberry white chocolate, maple walnut, and blueberry. Try one with your iced coffee. All set? Yeah. Thank you. We're with Derek Lowe. And uh, Derek, just talk about that. Getting that early lead, the back-to-back -back home runs in the first. Uh, nothing like having that quick lead to be able to get to work. Yeah, it's, you can't, it's a great feeling to know that you can you know, make some mistakes, but it, it was early. It was in the, uh, you know, the first inning and, you know, had a tough, I think, third inning and uh, was able to get through that and, you know, just, just plugged away. You know, it wasn't, you know, the prettiest of games, but, uh, you know, they're a very talented hitting team and, um, you know, they can have a big inning at any inning and so you just got to keep telling yourself, you know, it's a close game, which it was, and, you know, it was just in the eighth inning we had some insurance runs. It was just a great game. Defense behind you uh, early on. Nomar made a play. I think he ended up on the right side of second base to go. Yeah, you got to love that. Flyers. I mean, I thought I should have had it and didn't. And then uh, you expect for sure to be a base hit. And again, if you work work fast and throw strikes, and get, you know the defense is going to be there. Let's talk real quickly uh, about this five and zero run against Oakland. Now, obviously, it's a very good team, but when you get somebody's number like that, more from their mind almost, they start to think we just can't beat these guys. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. I, I think we've just played really good against them and pitched well. I think that's the most important thing. Um, you know, they had our number last year. I mean, we, I know we went out there, and I don't know when it was, and they, they kicked our tails. And, uh, you know, it, it, you got to play good against good teams. And, you know, we, we've done that. And, uh, you know, it's not to say take any, anything away from them. They're an extremely talented team. We just, play, we just played well against them. Six wins. Derek, thanks. Thank you very much. Second in the AL. Let's go back to our studios in Boston. All right, that's Tom Caron in the Red Sox locker room tonight. The Yankees fell behind big time against Tampa Bay, but getting a little scary there right now. Chris Gomez against El Duque. Goodbye. See you later. And Tampa Bay with a 6 to nothing lead. They don't know how to react because they're never up 6 to nothing. Steve Cox says, okay, we'll try to go up 8 to nothing Again, El Duque gives it up. Cox is first of two. Eight runs on six hits over an inning and two-thirds. That's 
not good. Sterling Hitchcock runs into some trouble too against Cox, his second of the ball game. Nine to nothing, Cox's first multi-home run game, but look at the score now, 10 to seven in the bottom of the ninth inning. We'll keep you updated, let you know when that game goes final. Hopefully it's sometime very soon because we know what Tampa Bay's bullpen's all about. Look at this, Tony Pena, former Red Sox catcher. He is a big league manager now. No jokes about Kansas City. They're in the big leagues, and he is the new skipper of the Royals. Bobby Kielty lines one to left. Chuck Knobloch can't make the play. Torrey Hunter scores, and right now the Twins lead at seven to six. Minnesota in the hunt, obviously, but uh, injury to Brad Radke. It's going to be interesting to see how they stay in it. Tony Pena getting an opportunity to manage. We were talking in the break about catchers. You get to work with Jason Veritek. One of the very best. You said probably the best you've, you've had. I think he's the best at, at calling a game that I've had. And uh, I've been around a lot of, a lot of guys that I do respect and that, that do a good job. But I think Jason's cut above, yeah, as far as cut, How important calling is a game. that for you as a pitcher? You're out there on the hill, and, the, you know, the catcher gives a signal, whatever it's going to be, and you're like, yeah, that's what I want to throw. Oh, it just makes a lot, the game goes a lot smoother that way. And uh, you, people probably noticed last night that he was coming out of the mound quite a bit, and it wasn't because we were on the same page. What it was is that... We thought that they were calling some pitches from second base, and it seemed like every pitch was important. Yeah, we got some tight situations where it was a big pitch in the game, and he'd come out, and we'd call like two or three different uh, pitches successfully, or uh, in succession. Yeah. I couldn't remember and them. I, you you couldn't. Told, no, I couldn't. If you I'm pitched, if you had any ability, you, you probably could remember. You keep telling me yeah. I have no ability, so I don't have to worry about <laughs> this that. This air plug is a challenge, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. It took me two weeks to get this that thing down. This thing is driving me up a wall. Two, it in two weeks, two months, whatever. Two months, the, whatever it takes. We're talking about all, you know, you don't throw overpowering anymore. You're, you're a pitcher. He, Jim always refers Come to on, it. Come on, I rushed it up here, 82, yeah. 83. Well, he always, 84, refer, you hit yeah, 84, he, he always refers to it, though, you throw below the hitter speed, the hitting speed. And that's a way to keep hitters off balance. I, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's correct. I mean, and also, the curveball that I throw, I think, has made a big difference in my game because it's so slow, and guys have to be aware of it. And uh, that way it makes my fastball a little bit harder. You know, and, and instead of 83, 84, it looks 87, 88 to him. Yeah, you can, once you set up guys with that off-speed stuff, plus his curveball is slow, but it, it still bites. It's not a lazy curveball, so it still has bite to it, uh, and that's why he gets a lot of swing and misses with what about this entire pitching staff? Do you guys feed off of each other? You watch this tonight. You watch Pedro on uh, Sunday night. You did the job last night. You guys have to be feeding off each other. A oh, I, it definitely works that way. Uh, I remember being uh, in San Francisco in the early 90s, and, and uh, Billy Swift and I and Trevor Wilson and Buddy Black, and we got a little roll, and that's how it works. And, you know, the Braves, we've seen them do it over and over again. And I think it's what we have going on right now here. And I, I especially like uh, Derek Lowe. I mean, uh, he's, he's in his late 20s. Uh, I, I like guys that are in their late 20s, early 30s. They seem to hit their peak at that time, you know, including myself. You know, I'm at 29 right now, so, uh, you know, I should really have a good year this year. <laughs> How about playing baseball in Boston? You, you've been around. We were kidding with Jim. You know, you've been, you played with so many different teams and with so many different teammates. It's probably hard to remember everybody who you played with, but baseball in Boston, it's a religion. I mean, they're very passionate out here. You, you, you must be enjoying it. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable, really. I, I, you, you people are crazy out there, I'm telling you. It's... <laughs> We're not crazy, I, whenever, it's insane. Whenever I was on the road, I came in here on the road, I was impressed, you know, with the, the fans and how energetic they are. But now that I'm here and I uh, see it every night, I remember about a week or 10 days ago, it was about 35 degrees, windy, blowing rain. I didn't even want to go in the dugout, and we have a heater down there. So it was about the sixth inning, and the place was packed. I'm sitting on TV, I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to go out and check out how comfortable these people really are. I look up over the dugout, I see a lady go, <laughs> teeth chatter, and then somebody gets a head, yeah! yeah! I mean, they're just going nuts, and the place is packed, and it, it, we love it. I mean, right. the players love that and feed off of it. Don't pick on yourself about your age, because Jim's the elder statesman on the set. Yeah. Ricky, is he? Yeah. I just turned 40. Uh, okay. Ricky Henderson. <laughs> Ricky Henderson's the uh, elder statesman on the ball club, and he's down in the locker room right now with Tom Caron. You know, bases loaded a couple of times, a couple infield singles get them in. You guys are hustling out there in the base pass. It's paying off. Oh, yeah. We, we playing real well. You know, everybody is, is, is a criminal, helping out, and everybody going out there playing hard. And we, we know we got to go out there and create something, you know, because our big man is down. So we got to go out there and create something, you know, get the base in with runners in scoring position. You want to run like this against the team, five straight against the A's. How does that work into their mind, into your mind? Does it at all? Is every game different, or does there start to be a feeling on one side or the other that these guys have our numbers? I think it's, it's, every, it's a different day each and every day. They might think we got a number because they only lost five, five games to it, but we go out there each and every day knowing they got a good ball club and they can win any day, so we just got to go out there and keep the pressure on them. Derek Lowe, six wins now, second in the AL. He's got it working. He got it working real well. You know, he's doing a great job for us, and each and every time he go out there, we know that he's going to keep us in the ball game, and we can try to go out there and score some run early for him. 
Thanks, Ricky. There you go. As a player. All right. Uh, you gotta be. I was talking. paying attention here, and uh, <laughs> we're talking about Ricky, about Ricky, Ricky Henderson as a, as a teammate. He's certainly a lot of fun to have around. We're laughing. I mean, Ricky, Ricky's a great guy. I mean, we've really uh, enjoyed him in the clubhouse. He's he's been uh, yeah, a tremendous lift, especially his last three games. You now with Manny out, he's you know, really done the job offensively. The team has really stepped it up with Manny out of the lineup, three and zero so far. You don't need Manny, do you? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> okay. They'll get him back at some point. We're going to keep John Burke for one more segment. We'll be taking your telephone calls. Here on Extra Innings. Up next, it's 1-866-ASK-NESSON. Stop by your local Shaw's Supermarket and Star Market to pick up a 24-ounce six-pack of Pepsi and a free Nesson Viewer's Guide. Jeep vehicles are known for capability, and now during the Jeep Challenge, we rule on a whole new level, starting with our 70-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge on engines and transmissions. Plus, choose Grand Cherokee and get a $2,500 cash allowance, or financing as low as 0%. So take the Jeep Challenge. You'll see we're hard to beat. Hey, you guys got to give me a head start next time. Great products, great protection, great values. Take the Jeep Challenge. See your New England Jeep dealer. Stay tuned to Nesson in May. Nesson is your ticket to Red Sox baseball. And in May, we've got showdowns with the Yankees, Mariners, Athletics, and more. Nesson premieres a season inside. Boston College Hockey, a one-hour front row special. Paw Sox baseball returns to Nesson with AAA action from McCoy. Spring has sprung, and so has Charlie Moore with a new season of Nesson Outdoors. All this and more in May on Nesson. If you want to get in the game, log on to Nesson.com, your online ticket to New England sports. Catch New England sports all season long on Nesson. And log on to Nesson.com for live news and scores to enter contests, win prizes, and more. Click on for Nesson Newswire email updates. Check in on the Nesson.com message board. Learn more about Nesson and preview upcoming programs. Nesson.com is your online ticket to New England sports. Log on and get in the game. And it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I believe in my instincts, I believe in, 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 in my knowledge, but you still have to have the Indians on the mound. Mm -hmm. Jason, can you tell about Derek's performance again today, I think? Uh, we needed it. Um, we needed it. And, and we need it every day out of every one of our starters. And, you know, he was able to move the ball around, had a very good change up today. And um, he didn't have as good a curveball till later. And um, he was able to move the ball around both sides of the plate. And you, know, you can do that with three or four different pitches. It, you know, allows margin for error a lot smaller. Had a little bit of trouble there in the third inning, but he worked his way out of it. Yeah, it was kind of a weird inning. Um, had a little blue pit, and then ended up walking Giambi, I think. And then, um, and then he hit Velarde. So. Um, but and then he made you know made good pitches to a dangerous hitter with Chavez, a very dangerous hitter. That's not the situation that we want to put ourselves in. And um, he made a very good 3-1 pitch. It set up his 3-2 uh, pitch. How much is he defensively? Start to start. Um, you know, I, I had the fortune of catching him when, you know, in, in the minor leagues when he had, you know, a, a, a starter repertoire, and. But he's come a lot farther since then. His sinker's gotten better to both sides of the plate. And I just, you know, there's still, uh, you know, believe it or not, he's going to get better. And I look, look for him to get better. All right, there he is. Uh, the other reason why the Red Sox pitching staff has done so well. You said the baseball fans in Boston are passionate. You're going to get that airpiece all squared away. <laughs> and we're going to hear from these guys and see what they think about the... Uh, replacement pace, but it's not working. <laughs> all right, let's talk to uh, Dan from Boston. Hey, Dan. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Hey, Dan. I got two questions for you. First, uh, well, actually, Jimmy, I love what you're doing. Love the way you're coming along. Bob, not so much. First Thank question. You. <laughs> all right, Dan, um, thanks. I noticed that you guys are uh, they're doing some sort of Isaac from the Love Boat finger pointing type thing uh, over the last couple of days. You guys know what that is? Uh, uh, yeah, I've seen Biaga doing that. Yeah, I don't really know what that means. 
I'm saying it, and you know, I'm laughing, but I'm giving him a courtesy laugh. Doing, I don't know what it means. He, he's been doing that a lot. Isn't that from professional wrestling, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's made a couple yeah. professional uh, professional wrestling moves. I almost got a cramp on the back of my leg. <laughs> he can get hurt even, <laughs> on, tipped over the set. <laughs> even on the set. Let's talk to uh, Scott from Canton, New Hampshire. Hi, gentlemen. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is uh, kind of with Nomar Garcia Parra. But before you answer the question, I kind of have a comparison. We all know that the difference between Shea Hill and Brands hitting from you know last year to this year, with him being more patient. So my question is, is, is why is Nomar swing at the first pitch when there's runners in scoring position? That's his style. Yeah, yeah. Nomar's done that his whole career. You know, he bats 330 doing that. You know, and right now he's batting probably 305, 306. Um, I, I think last year, you know, he missed a lot of at bats, and he's just getting back in the swing of things. You know. Facing the you yeah. know, big league pitch. I, I heard a number on Nomar, believe it or not. I think in his career he's hit like 415 off the first pitch. Wow. So that gives you a reason why he swings at the first pitch pretty often. He, did, li he likes it. Did you ever face him? Yes. And, and I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come out of that. He hit, he hit a ball uh, in Texas off me. Uh, this is when my velocity started going down and I started to realize my velocity was <laughs> depreciating. I was 0-2 count on him. I threw him two paint balls away. So I'm thinking, okay, I think I can come in on Nomar right here. I come in on him and he hits one off the facade and left field right down the line. I mean, just a bullet. You wouldn't believe how many times we're sitting here or, or watching the game in the studio and I said, do not go inside. I'm like talking to the other pitcher, yeah. you know, kidding around. Don't go inside. Don't go inside. Tampa Bay game. Do not go in there. He had him up, up in the count. Boom. Yeah. He's, it's a pride he's, thing he's, sometimes, isn't it? He's got quick hands. But the great thing about him, too, is if you watch him, I mean, he can look terrible on a breaking ball on the first pitch. You know, like Tim Hudson made him look bad a couple of times last night. But then all of a sudden, he, you know, throw the same pitch, and he'll smoke it, you know. And I, I mean, that's why he's the hitter he is. He, he hits more, more balls on the fat part of the bat yeah, squares than, it up often. than anybody I've ever seen. Well, let's talk to Bruce from North Adams. Hi, Bruce. Hi there, guys. Uh, hey, Bruce. Nice show. It's great, great to have uh, Jim on, uh, and John on there. Thank you. Um, I just wondered if uh, you could do a, fill me in on the status on Hermanson and uh, how soon he will uh, be getting back. And, uh, Jen, um, uh, your curveball is very, very uh, good to see. Uh, it, it's like Jim says, it does really bite, and, um, and uh, they are really fooled by it. And uh, uh, you're doing a good job there. really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's, it's something I've worked on the last couple of years, and it's, it's really come along. So hopefully it, it continues. John, let me put you on the spot here. Let's talk about your curveball a little bit. Uh, what, what do you do? Uh, pretty simple. I mean, I just grab it right here with the middle finger on the uh, seam. I got my thumb on this seam, as you can see. So there's a lot of friction there. And uh, when I get back in the back of my motion, you know, I curl it here. And the other thing that I do to take the velocity off is I short my stride quite a bit. I, my stride is probably uh, three, four inches shorter on my curveball than the other pitches. How much space between the ball and the, and the back part Not of your hand? Not much. I usually try to keep it. Yeah, does that it's, take it's much, really choked. That, that takes, takes a little velocity, velocity off Right. But my fastball will be more, you know, in this area here. You throw uh, both two-seam and four-seam or just two-seam now? No, I throw two-seamer and I throw four-seamer, which uh, is a cutter. And I just put a little pressure on the four-seamer. I put a press, little bit of pressure on my middle finger. And that makes the ball kind of drift. Dustin Hermanson, by the way, um, they're still ho they don't have, there's no need to rush him right now. That's the big thing. He can really come back that, that's and be 100%. Nice. They don't have to panic. He right. threw in the pen yesterday. Yeah, exactly. He said he felt he great. He felt so. feeling all right. He told I'll, me that today. I'll so. be honest. When you came back, we were sitting here saying, you know, you had that little stint in Pawtucket, and we're like, he thinks he's going to be ready to pitch already? And they were like, <laughs> yeah. what's he thinking? And you come on, you do it. Because usually yeah. you need to build up the, you know, 60, 70 pitches so you give your team... You know, right. five innings. Well, they wanted you know? me to. They wanted me. The guys down there, I, I, I think, wanted me to throw. They thought I should throw another game. And I, you know, looking at me, I would have said the same thing. But I told Grady, I, I felt like I was ready. I felt like I could throw five innings. I wanted to throw five innings here. I would have been mad if I'd have thrown five innings in Pawtucket and felt good. Hey, we're not going to get the Red Sox those five innings. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's that's why I wanted to be here. And I think it was the right decision. Now that we're out five start ten. So w I, again, we're not back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> those numbers count. Right? Yeah, exactly. that was. <laughs> Don't want to waste the bullets again when you get to. Uh, not saying you're old, yeah, but, but I had confidence to do it. You know. Yeah. I mean, I really felt like I was that's ready. That's the biggest thing in your yeah, heart. I, mean, I, I, I knew I could do it. So, and uh, we'll see what happens with Dustin Hermanson too. Chris from Wallingford, Connecticut. You're up next. Hey guys, how are you? Good. Hi, how are you? Hey John, nice job last night. Great, looking great this year. Thank you very got much. A, got a, one question. Um, and basically, you see the team is gelling real well. I mean, you're in mid-season form right now. Um, it's only a month and a half into the season. Manny goes down. Seems like everybody in the world is 
getting nervous except for the Boston team. Anybody looking at uh, anyone picking up uh, um, somebody in a trade for midseason to, for a stretch run in case anybody gets hurt? Is there any, any talk right now? I don't know. I mean, you'd have to...